Bring the ship up to broadcast depth. We're going in. Here we go. It's that time. Here we are on Sunday once again. How's your self isolation? How's your house arrest going today? Today we're going to be talking about body language. I have a special guest with me today. I have John from Modern Life Dating. So hold on, get started here in just a second. like that that's the first time you've heard that whole thing isn't it it's pretty cool <laughs> old school i like it <laughs> yeah yeah hey, you know it's great is um i i understand that um youtube of course they're very they're sticklers for of course uh, uh copyright infringements and stuff like that but that's right. what makes being a good musician useful sometimes right i have a lot of i'm a man of many talents so <laughs> yeah. how you doing man Good, good, good. Mm-hmm. Bright and early, 5.30 a.m. on a Sunday morning in Tokyo, or Monday, Monday morning, morning, actually. Monday morning there? Yeah. Yeah, I'd say. yeah it's, it's uh, good. Good, good, good. So, uh, you, so uh, just to um, get things started off here, uh, just to let everybody know, um, John is has pulled an all-nighter. So, <laughs> so uh, if if he's if he looks a little uh, if he looks a little sleepy, that's probably why. But I, I think you're pretty you're, you're good to go. You ha- you keep odd hours as it is, anyways, right? Yeah, uh, actually, so yesterday was uh, Sunday, so I kind of because I've been doing the launch for the last five days. Uh, mm-hmm. or it's it's a five day launch, and we're coming up on the last thirty six hours now. Um, I've been like my schedule's been more so on the American time, so mm-hmm. it's been up and down. But um, no, I'm fine. Had a had a nice strong Japanese coffee. Um, everything's good to go here. My favorite little old lady at the Seven Eleven hooked me up, so I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been getting into um, uh, the bulletproof coffee stuff for a while now. I I actually oh, yeah. I, the problem is like whenever you you drink it, it's like it's kind of like got that butter stuff in it. So you're like, oh, I don't want to do things. <laughs> I probably shouldn't drink it while I'm while I'm doing shows, but uh, it it does work. Uh, and no, they don't pay me to say that. I actually kind of like the the product. So yeah. um, today we're going to be talking about body language. Uh, this is something that I think both of you and I uh, share in common quite a bit. Now, uh, the the reason why people ask me about body language. Uh, uh, questions and things like that was with respect to the red pill and intersexual dynamics is because uh, uh, back in 2018, I did a post that was called body language. And I think this was before you came out with your, your, uh, your program that you, you right. have, well, which we'll talk about today too. Um, but I, I put this out there and uh, I'll be, um, by the way, anybody wants to see uh, anything, whether it's uh, our programs or, or a blog post or anything that I reference, it's already in the relevant links in the description here. So uh, if you want to get uh, any more in-depth details or whatever, you just go ahead and check those out. But uh, the uh, the blog post that I'm referring to is called Body Language. And uh, it's it was, uh, to me, it was kind of like a seminal post. I, a lot of other people you know, really like it as well because I kind of broke down um, sort of the subconscious behaviors that both men and women, but primarily men in this in this essay, but like the the behaviors that men and women kind of display um, when they're kind of communicating with each other with nonverbal communications. And so what I'll just to give you a little bit of a background about that post, uh, I had I was I, that post took me probably about six months to to compile and put together because I put out uh, uh, some requests for guys uh, in my own communities and on Twitter and everything else to send me pictures of couples and to uh, I, you know they they were sending me they started doing this just sort of offhand saying is this an alpha tell is this a beta tell because uh-huh. in the past I've written essays about alpha tells beta tells uh, alpha um, alpha versus beta communication styles um, and a lot of that has to do with nonverbal communication. So, but I'd never done anything like this before because I had all these guys send me these pictures, 
And um, whether it was people that they knew or it was like celebrities. And of course, it's easier to go with celebrities because people people already know who they are. And sort of I, I think they we would like to believe that we know what their personality is really like, whether we do or we don't. Um, so they were sending me all these pictures and some of them were anonymous, like I said, and some of them were, were, you know, celebrities that we, we know. Um, so what I did was I compiled all these things together and I started looking at the commonalities of like ins expressions, uh, physical, and that, that th these are couples. This isn't just like single guys doing whatever, which we'll talk about today, but I wanted to just sort of preface today's, uh, topic with, um, uh, just a little background on like what my involvement in all of this, you know, in body language and in uh, subcommunications. Subcommunications is really kind of a term that uh, I think uh, the P uh, P old PUAs came up with, but it's uh, subconscious communications or it's it's communications that are underneath, like say, overt conscious cognitive uh, communications with somebody. Like I'm talking to you right now, but you can also see what my body posture is, what my facial. Right. Are the intonation of my voice, like if I'm yelling at you, if I'm like whispering, or I I, I put these little pregnant pauses in there. That's that's a sub communication, and we'll dig I into that. Up on, I pick up one of those recently with Rich's interview with Andrew Tate. You could see as the interview progresses. I don't know if you noticed this, but mm -hmm. at the beginning, Rich kind of had his arms crossed, and as they started mm -hmm. connecting more about cards and stuff, he had his arms uncrossed. Then they both took off their jackets. This was like them kind of like, like you know, lowering their guard, if you will. And they're Not getting sure. more chummy yeah. as they're talking about supercars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, appearance has is also uh, a communication, like dress style and things like that. Like when I'm when I'm on this show, I try to be as casual as I can because that's the um, that's the image, that's the appearance I want to I, I want to be casual. I want guys to like feel like comfortable. I don't want to come in here in like a three piece suit. I can wear a three piece suit. I have some very nice suits. I can I can pull that off if I have to. But when I'm talking about this stuff as as Rolo Tomasi, the author, I want to be like more uh, accessible, approachable. Um, somebody who you can, you know, you can ask questions of rather than like a, a, a professor or something like that. So um, there's definitely, a, a, you know, I know uh, it was a Tanner, Tanner Guzzi has a, a really great book called The Appearance of Power. And he goes into like oh. the, the dress. He's, he's always been sort of the male style guy for a while. Um, but uh, the it's it's actually a really good book. He's uh, he he talks a lot about um, the underlying reasons for why we do what we do as far as like how we present ourselves. And when I, I and I've talked to Tate about this as well is um, I, I kind of I don't want to say bristle, but I kind of I kind of raise an eyebrow whenever somebody says, well, you shouldn't care what other people think about you, man. Or a real men don't care about the way they look. They're just real men. And it's oh like, God. no, as human beings, just human beings in general, general, yes, we care about what other people, we're social animals. We care about what other people think about how we behave, how we, how we come off, how we present ourselves. And whether that's like uh, through your, your dress style or the way that you talk. Um, <laughs> just a side, a funny side story is before I started, uh, doing this show and I, before I'd made a live appearance, I had like my first two books had come out before I had ever, um, before I'd ever gone sort of semi-public and, and done like uh, talks and things like that or showed my face because I was I was still, you know, working in another industry and I wanted to make sure, you know, keep everything protected. And and um, so everybody thought that I my voice was Sam Bada's voice. <laughs> <laughs> he did the he did the audio books. And and let, I'll tell you guys right now. I mean, I don't think this is. I'm not ashamed to say this. Is that I I chose Sam Bada because his voice is that radio announcer kind of serious voice, and and I wanted it to come across as something that was, you know, um, a, a, you know, this is some serious shit, right? I mean, this is something that you you're you need to pay attention to, and and when you have the voice like this, and you're talking like a radio announcer, and it, then you know people sort of pay attention. That's why they used to pay those guys to do the the movie trailers back in the day to to introduce the movie. So that's a those sub iconic ones, right? Those old that, old like this Saturday, like, this Saturday like never Sunday, before. Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> monster trucks. Oh trucks man, for us, yeah. Do they have monster truck things out there in Nevada? Oh yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. Yes, we that's like one of the, the white trash strengths of living in Florida as we have. Those yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, we do. We have a road. We have a uh, the uh, Nevada State Rodeos here as well. 
Um, and yeah, we, we have motocross, we have, uh, we have monster trucks, uh, maybe once a year we get motocross and we get monster trucks out here and they do it at the, uh, the fairgrounds and stuff, but it, it's, it's a good time. I'm not gonna lie. It's a good time. I'm not, you know, I'm not a redneck or anything like that. I, I only play one when I go out on my, I'm a sled neck. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I'm a sled neck, uh, about, th uh, three months of the, you know, the winter months of the year. So that's, that's about what what i do but like that's another thing is like i i don't want to come out like yesterday when we when we were on um rule zero yeah. and i had my camouflage hat and i had my my my, my uh, mossy oak you know shirt on and then you had your camo on i'm like oh you got i guess you got the message kind of thing <laughs> that, like people will see that I'm, I'm always like conscious of like how i'm presenting myself now i never had to before you know, I mean, if, if I was playing in a band, sure. But like, I never had to think about those things before. And now I really do. I have to really pay attention to like the, the clothes I'm wearing. Like, you know, when I'm talking to you right now, um, like a lot of guys will say, well, you know, he doesn't sound like anything like I thought he was going to sound like. I'm like, yeah, I, I sound like the guy who grew up in, you know, Southern California and Huntington Beach. Right. I sound like that guy. But that's just where I come from. If I if I grew up in say like Atlanta, I'd have a different accent. If I grew up in Japan or whatever, I'm sure I'd probably have another accent there. And so those are really important sub communications that we get from people. Now that's just in general. And I, but another thing I wanted to sort of point out here is uh, it, I'm just going to throw out a, a book title here that's really really good. That if you guys are really interested in um, in body language and sub communications. Um, there's a really great author and I've met him, uh, on one occasion, his name is Joe Navarro and yeah. Joe has, uh, he's got a series of books. His, uh, I think his most famous one is, is what is everybody saying? And he was an FBI profiler and he's one of these guys who analyzes body language. He's a body language expert, right? And, uh, he's got a, he's got another book called the dictionary of body language. And so if you, if this is something that really like you, you really want to dig into, or maybe you're like self-conscious about things, um, John's of course, ha of course has body language mastery, which we're going to talk about here in a little bit. This is your second time doing this now too, as, as I recall. So that's one, I'm, I'm just put this on the table right now. That's why I had you on here is because I know you're doing this again. And uh, I've talked yeah. about body language. I've talked about subcommunications, uh, I think one time before, but I know you're doing this. And so I wanted to come on here and sort of talk with you about like, you've done this once before. So right. my question to you is what did you learn on that first pass at body, at your body language mastery course? What did, what was the, what was the, the biggest takeaway, I guess, from when you were doing that? So the, the big thing is, so I made two versions of this course. So the, the 1.0 version was released last year in quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three. Mm -hmm. And then I released the 2.0 version in December. And so um, what happened was everybody who bought 1.0, I gave them a 2.0 completely for free. And then this time around, people get 1.0 and 2.0 together. And what I learned was that there's two things I really learned. One is that men really are thirsty and hungry for a community of red pill guys. This okay. is like, it's because a lot of guys think that it's just as a course. So what, what I'm offering is that you get the course, but it's not just like, I'm not like one of those Twitter guru scammers who just like gives you a course, tells you there's limited PDFs and mm -hmm. uh, you know, th that's all you get. I'm going no, fast. Yeah. Right. You know what? <laughs> The big thing is like you come into three weeks of webinar training through uh, a video conferencing software called uh, Zoom, kind of like how what we're doing now. Um, in quarter four, we had up to 140 guys in there. And a lot of guys, like I had a guy, his, his name's Kurt. He's 56 and he's living down in South Florida. And he's just, you know, he joined the community. He attended the webinars and he talked with literally all, all of these red pill guys. And he's just like, He's like, for me, he's like, this was just so much closure to know that like, I'm not alone in the world. Like there's other real life guys who believe this red pill stuff because we're so super outnumbered um, in regards to red pill guys versus blue pill guys. And what I learned from this last year was that I, I had no idea that these guys were like striving for a red pill community. I think that's why the Rule Zero Live tickets like – they sold out like that. I, we, I don't think any of us were expecting it to happen mm -hmm. in one week. We completely sold out. We, we said like the sales will go on for a month and a half. 
we were we were planning to like sell we're like oh when we get to march we'll we'll increase the price like 200 yeah but they were gone <laughs> right and we'll yeah. never that. we'll never get there yeah okay. yeah so that's what i really took away because a lot of guys they ended up coming to me and telling me the exact same thing they said listen this course is phenomenal because i hired two separate very beautiful japanese models had them perform these gestures and then i over i did like um a, a voiceover explaining what the gestures meant, right? Positive body language and negative. And a lot of guys were like, you know, the course is amazing. They're like, but the real value was the fact that they could come in there and talk to me, you, mm. Rich, Ryan, Troy, mm. Donovan. You know, they they would come in there and literally have a conversation with us and be like, hey, this is my this is my real problem that I'm having right now. How can you help me solve this with a red pill lens? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that is what I found out was like what everybody was really liking. And then, you know, the community is, is the private, it's a men's only Facebook group, you know, that mm -hmm. we have in, with the group as well. And they can, they, you know, continuously use that as a source. Like, Hey guys, they'll post stuff and be like, this is my Tinder profile. This is my Bumble profile. Like, do you think this is good? Do you think this is attractive? Is this alpha? Is this beta? Is this needy? How does mm -hmm. my body language in this? And, and some of these guys would post some pictures that were, pretty terrible but they thought they're like hey i think this is good and we'd be like hey listen man like you know you got to do this and this and this to you change know, that, it up a bit actually, like that that reminds me of something and what i a point i wanted to get here is um there are a lot of guys will will come in and they'll criticize like say the red pill they say oh it's all about looks like these are the looks maxers guys right, right. they oh it's not about game it's not about whether and in a sense when we're talking about like you're like when you're presenting yourself on your your dating profiles or uh bumble or whatever else in that instance yeah it is about that it is very much about the way that you look and the way that you're presenting yourself i um i i had a, a guy that i was counseling who um who was he was just out of a, a divorce and i think he was about 45 50 years old and he was he was trying to present himself on like tinder and, and these dating apps and and everything and he's showing me these pictures he said do you think i should change this and i was looking at his at the way he was presenting himself and i'm like well you kind of look like you know you're you're a single dad that's you know trying to you know force fit himself into the new sexual marketplace and then he'd, he'd show me how he worked out a lot he was he was in actually pretty good shape he had this one picture of him where it was just he had his shirt off but he was it was his back right and he was kind of looking over his shoulder kind of thing and i said go with that one and see what that happens and as soon as he switched that over it was sort of like this um i don't say it was like an indifferent look but it was kind of like he, like he didn't care he was just sort of you know casually looking back and like yeah. that shot of him got him the most action it got him the most responses because of that and unfortunately like it's not just like you sitting there going smiling like it's yeah. your high school you know seeing a picture <laughs> you know or, or whatever it's like there's there's a psychology and there are sub communications even in something as simple as just your profile pic for for something like that and you have like a marketing background because you had to set up displays and you had to like yeah. with the liquor industry you had to like everything. make something look good you know you have, I, mean? I wore a lot of hats yes <laughs> yeah. and i think a lot of guys you know some of the guys that i have that typically have more trouble when they join they're good guys. They make like one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year, but they're a software engineer. They're they're mm -hmm. like a civil engineer. They're you know they're working in game development, right? And so mm -hmm. they have like these really very kind of left brained kind of uh, uh, occupations compared to like when guys like us, you know, have I have a sales and marketing background. You do as well, where you know you have to like you have to you know you know marketing yourself. In business and marking yourself in the sexual marketplace, very very similar things. We you got to put a little razzle dazzle on some things to catch their eyes. You know, like I mean, I'm pretty sure you dealt with those little those little lights that they put under the bottle of liquor that like you oh, turn yeah. on and it lights up the whole bottle. I think I have a few laying around. <laughs> you know, has yeah. zero effect on the quality of the alcohol, but it's yeah. just part of the game to like catch the right. eye. And and you probably know this as well. And and this is one of the things that we particularly in my line of work. I've worked in the gaming industry. I've worked in uh, the liquor industry primarily. I mean, yeah, most of my career has been spent in in Nevada. So that's really what. I focused on, but there's always this, uh, any agency, even if I'm just the guy that's, you know, working at an in-house or something like that, the, 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 the rule of the day is, um, you can present something on a silver platter or you can present it on a dirty trash can lid. And 
that's it can be like the same damn thing and it can be just as desirable on one as it is on the other if, by itself but if you put the way that you present that there is a there is a science and a psychology that goes behind how you're presenting that and in this case when we're talking about guys um, you know who want to solve their reproductive problem or the guys who want to put themselves out there they want to you know they want to date they want to find you know they want to get what maybe they're not even players right they just want to to you know go out on some dates or something like that they've got to present themselves in such a way that they you know that they become attractive i'm not saying i have this down to a science i'm just saying right. that i know some principles that i that you can certainly apply to these things and yeah. one of those principles is the uh, the idea of the purple cow I, have, you, have you read the book uh, a purple cow Purple no, cow, it, it's, that? it, it's about pattern recognition basically is what it is. It's like in a, in a sea of black or a sea of like brown cows, the one that stands out, of course, is the purple cow, right? That's wow. because we, you know, as human beings, we have pattern recognition and we see, oh, there's, there's an anomaly. There's something that's out of the ordinary. And it's our kind of brains that uh, we want to, uh, we want to put uh, order into chaos, right? So if you've got all nothing but these things, you see that one thing that's right there, the purple cow in the in the herd of of brown cows, that becomes something that stands out. That's some, something that becomes unique. And really, that's a kind of a principle. And the book was based on this. So that's a principle that we apply to a lot of different things. You can apply it to advertising. You can certainly apply it to your your sex life as well. And so that's what most guys already. We have this as kind of like our our baseline functioning, you know, what we, the starting package, I guess, for our mental firmware is, is pattern recognition. And that's what most guys really do when they start, they, they want to uh, sort of define themselves or set themselves apart from the rest of the herd. The problem is, is most of these guys, what they're thinking sets them apart, really puts them into the herd rather than sets them apart from the herd. Now that can be like with, with looks that can be with attitude that can be with game that can be with a lot of different ways, but even the guy who's the most beta blue pill guy running beta game, like, you know, oh, can I buy you a drink at the, you know, at the bar kind of thing? Like that, that guy right there is, he is part of the brown cow herd. He, but he thinks he's setting himself apart by doing certain things. And I think a lot of guys sort of don't understand because we're, they're, they're brought up in this old social contract that says, do these things and it'll make you unique. It'll make right. you not like other guys. Yeah. And so, so that's what they say. Well, if I if I identify with women and if I do what they say and if I I, I got to figure out what that what it is that they want, I'll become that, and therefore they will want me because that will set me apart from these other guys, these typical men. And you can hear this. You can hear this from like male feminists do this all the time, right? They they think, well, I'll be a male feminist. That'll set me apart from the herd. Yes, it will. In the wrong way. Yes, <laughs> exactly. The way that you don't want to be. <laughs> and you know, like like some people will be like, you know, I I get this from kind of like I think Donovan likes to call them red pill meatheads. He's like, oh, I don't need to like make myself look good on dating apps. If she likes you, she likes you, bro. Like. You, you don't get it. Like if you have you been seeing these new things that girls have been doing now, it's the face filter when it scans their face and it makes their their cheeks more round and makes their chin smaller and it puts a glaze mm -hmm. over their face yep. and removes yep. all the blemishes. There's a um I forget what it is. It's an app too, and it's like in its second version right now as well. Yeah. I didn't even know about it until I think my daughter or somebody showed it to me. She said, "Have you seen this?" And I'm like, and it shows <laughs> and all you got to do is run one pass on it, and it like yeah. takes away every physical blemish, any yeah. uh, any wrinkles, and makes you look like you're 20 years younger. Just and, like and you know every every girl right now in America, in Japan, in Korea, in China, this stuff all originated in China. The small mm. chin and, and the the alignment of the jaw to make that face look a little bit more petite, more feminine mm. that originated from software that's been, ha been in Japan since I'm not I kid you not probably like 2012. Mm. But, um, like if you want a competitive edge on dating markets, cause a lot of guys say like, Oh, I don't get any matches Ooh. on Tinder or Bumble or whatever. Chances are these guys' photos, they're not marketed as well. If you have really good photos, it's its a difference between, I mean, it's a night and day difference. Like, mm. I always tell guys, one of the advices I say, hey, look, you these days, uh, getting access to a photographer, everybody and their mother's a photographer these days. They're a dime a dozen, right? Mm -hmm. You can get $100 and you get a photographer to take care of, of, like, your photos. Four different photos, four outfits, and four locations. Like, four sets is what I say. And you can get a guy off of Craigslist to do these for you and then go into Photoshop and touch these up 
And those those dating photos will literally pay dividends for at least two to three years mm -hmm. compared to the guy who just takes a picture like with his iPhone. He's just like, hey, OK, here we go. Uh, there. Oh, man, I got no I got no uh, matches. Uh, mm -hmm. It's uh, I got to go black pill, you know, right. <laughs> like, I want to I, I, I want to I, I'm looking at the chat here as we're doing this. I'll, well, what, what about just talking to her and being a good friend and blah, blah, blah. OK, yeah, that's I, I get that. Yes, that is also very important to have game to actually, you know, be able to interact, carry on a conversation, uh, everything that we've always talked about now. But today's topic, what we're talking about is getting to that point, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't have those conversations unless you have something about you that is in some way physically arousing, attractive to that person, right? So like today's show is going to be all, all we're going to talk about looks today. Definitely. We're going to definitely talk about looks. We're going to definitely talk about body language and sub communications as well. But that does in no way disqualifies you know you having some sort of congruence between your personality and knowing game and holding frame and everything else that i've been talking about ad infinitum for almost 20 years now we're not throwing any of that away we're just in fact we're, we're focusing on on what everybody wants to talk about right look looks and and, and uh, how do i get the girls right exactly um oh, so i i i wanted to um so you've got you've got a course coming in. The, the one thing I wanted to ask you uh, right here from the outset is: so when the guys, I, I let me just clarify things here. I didn't, I wasn't endorsing your uh, your body language mastery class on the first go because I really I have to be really careful of who I co-brand with, obviously. Right. Yeah, um, of course. And so I wanted to, because a lot of people will say, well, you know, oh, that guy, John, he's, he's a player or he's a, he's a, he's like a, a what, a professional wrestler <laughs> or he's, <laughs> he's like a showman or something. I can't believe you even talked to that guy. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And oh, I get it. But see, here's the thing is like, I, I, I've, I've known you long enough and I've worked with you long enough. Um, you've been on rule zero for, we're, we're almost a year now. Um, but people don't understand that I've known you for a lot longer than just the year that you've been on rule zero. Um, and I, I, I get where you're coming. Like your message is still the same that it's always hasn't changed at all. It's like, this is just what you've been, been doing. But so I was cautiously optimistic about it. Yeah. You said, Hey, you do want to be an affiliate marketer? I said, well, okay, let, let me just, let me see how it goes. And then I participated and I came in and I watched some of these things and I was just sort of a passive listener. I was like uh, auditing the course, let's just say. And I wanted to, uh, to get an idea of what you were doing with these guys. And so you have these videos, you have all these examples of like body language and what, what, what this means and what that means. Uh, a lot of people think that you read too much, like not just you, but just anybody who like studies this kind of stuff say, Oh, you're reading too much into one behavior or one action. And it's like, yeah, but when those actions happen over and over and over again and they become a habit or they become something that is routine or some kind of commonality between uh, you know, guys who might be in Japan and guys who might be in, you know, New York or whatever. It's the same thing that's happening. There's something going on there. That's not just, well, it's just a casual thing. No, there's right. actual, there's actual meaning. There's actual sub communications that we, we do without thinking. And so I'm watching these courses and of course I come out and I look at this and I did the same thing that I think probably most critics will do. And so they'll go, who needs to know this? Who cares about this? You know, who doesn't know that when a girl walks in front of you, that that means something rather than when she's walking with you or walking behind you or like, what does, what does it mean when she won't hold your hand or when she, you know, like little stupid things like we would think of like, well, who didn't learn that in middle school when you had your first little girlfriend who didn't learn that when you were in high school and you had your first girlfriend and you know, and you, you had a sort of trial and error to figure out what she meant by, uh, you know, how she dressed or what her facial, you know, all these things that, that sort of add up that we, we kind of take for granted, right? Yeah. Because we have like some, we have a, uh, a practiced and a learned social intelligence from all that time what we spend high school or, you know, our teenage years, maybe into our, into our early twenties or whatever, we're still and then working with people out. too. Like, you know, just like you get, like, I think in your industry, you probably like when at those events, you're probably meeting like oh, yeah. 100 people plus a day. Yes. Those are like little micro transactions that your brain stores. Mm -hmm. like I used to be a waiter, a taxi driver, worked in a nightclub, you know, mm -hmm. telemarketer. So I have a lot of experience dealing mm -hmm. with multiple humans, multiple walks of life. And like in a mm -hmm. day, like 100 plus people, you know. So mm -hmm. like the, you know, compared to a job, like some of these guys, you know, some of these guys, they worked in a kitchen, 
they were their dishwasher and then they got their software engineering degree and they moved from like you know, a little corner in the kitchen to like a corner in the office and they really have a very small social circle and they don't have the privilege that we have to like kind of get this emotional intelligence like this eq right. if you will right. social intelligence is what yes. it is it, yes. it's understand and and i get that like a lot of guys particularly when they have even some like slight amount of autism I, I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure somebody in the in the comments will. But like when a guy is autistic, it's sort of there is a deficiency in understanding and being able to read like facial expression, being able to read social cues and things like like we take for granted that we learned and internalized without really even realizing that that's what we were doing. Like we a lot of this a lot of the social skills a lot of the ways that we understand like if a person's pissed off at us or if they're like uh, enamored with us or if they're you know they're starstruck or whatever i don't know wh whatever the emotion is like we can sort of read that or we get that like we call it a vibe right well she's vibing on me or or, or my my boss is pissed off well how do you know because he raised his voice because he he ha he's doing things that my subconscious and my peripheral consciousness picks up on but my 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 cognitive my straight up you know awareness isn't because they're trying to like repress that but you still feel that vibe and uh, you know if you're autistic you, you don't really get those things i'm not saying everybody is but i'm saying by order of degree particularly now because we're dealing with a social uh social order of guys who are being brought up behind a screen right now or maybe they don't have the opportunity to interact and then learn those things in in a natural way they need some kind of understanding. They need some kind of education about this. And sometimes that doesn't happen until they get older. Like you were saying before, like if a guy is a coder and all he does is just he's behind a screen all the time or he's doing something like uh, there are certain, I think, uh, uh, lines of work like professions where we think that's an introverted profession and this is an extroverted profession. Or if you're if you're a writer, for example, that's supposed to be some sort of introverted, you know, profession, and that because you you spend a lot of time alone and you're not talking with people. At least that's the the idea, right? Um, whereas if you're a, a performer, you're a musician or something, you're you're meeting people, you're shaking hands, you're signing autographs, that kind of stuff. They think of that as an extroverted. But as a, according to those uh, those choices that you make and according to the lifestyles that you live, maybe you have more occasion to learn things about body language, about understanding subcommunications than you would if you're doing something else. And so just to finish my story here is I, I, I was sitting in with some of your classes and I'm, mm -hmm. my first impression was who doesn't know this? And I think probably people who are outside looking in would have the same thing. They're like, who's, who's going to pay for this? Everybody knows this. And it's like, no, they don't particularly the last, at least the last two generations, a lot of guys need this. And I'm like, I was, I was thinking about that and I'm like, who doesn't know these things? But then I'm looking at this from a red pill lens and I'm looking at this, this course as if like, I'm like, okay, I got to like back up and I go, well, what if I'm a blue pill guy? What if I'm a guy who, who doesn't have these social graces, right? How, well, how else you are, are, who you are. How do you learn it? How, how yeah. else can you get it? You're you're also, you know, you're Rolo Tomasi. Like, you know, you live and breathe red pill literature every day. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you you really and you don't really associate with blue pill guys because you know you're kind of in this sphere. So yeah, for like a guy like you to come in there be like, who doesn't know this stuff? I mean, there there's a guy I had, right? Good looking guy. He looks like a young Johnny Depp and mm -hmm. um lives in Washington, makes a hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year, twenty seven years old great fashion, clean skin, like no blemishes, real handsome guy, was on a three-year dry spell. Mm -hmm. And he, what's funny, like he was blogging and he was, he was, you know, he was reading the typical PUA trash, Roosh's books and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, his blog, he used to celebrate when he would get a girl's phone number. And then he joined the course and I, I taught him this kind of stuff, which like I said, you know, my big eye-opening moment for this was when I did a show with Donovan mm -hmm. and everybody contacted me after like, Hey, tell us more about body language. Tell us more about body language. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, how does everybody not know this stuff? Like I thought everybody knew this stuff. Like, you know, but, it's, but like you said, we're kind of like, you know, kind of like Asperger's nation right now. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's, and I, it's, I, I'm, of course, you know, I'm writing book four right now. And yes. part of this is, uh, in, in sort of the buildup, one of the one of the themes of that is we are in a new order. We're in an age of new enlightenment, and I don't mean that for, uh, that enlightenment can be positive or it can be negative. And in some ways, right now, we're discovering certainly that it's there's aspects of it that are negative. 
one of those negative aspects is that although we have uh, you know, unprecedented communication with people. Like I'm talking to you in Japan right now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> it's tomorrow in Japan. From and I'm the future. I would never teach you about body language. <laughs> we'll put it this way. In, uh, in any other prior era, I probably would never have had contact with you to like talk to you and to even have this conversation. Yeah. So just keep that in mind when I'm talking about this, but like in this new order that one of the downsides to it is that we also limit ourselves from, an education in like social graces and understanding body language, for example, understanding, uh, you know, sub communications and stuff. And I, I don't think that it is any coincidence that a lot of guys say, well, I'm, I'm slightly autistic or I'm, I've got Asperger's syndrome or I'm, I'm just not, I'm just more introverted. Right. Well, yeah, because you've, since you were 10 years old, you've been behind a screen all the time and you only interact with guys via text through your digital consciousness. You don't get to, you don't learn what a facial expression means you don't learn what vocal intonations mean uh this is why guys have such a hard time figuring out girls like, i don't know what she meant or she's sending me mixed messages yeah of course because you don't understand that the medium is the message and that's a another theme i wanted to talk about today is that the medium is the message and uh a woman's behavior or whether it's you know sub communications, whether it's her facial expressions, women are very good at this. They're very. Yeah. In fact, I would say that the, that part of women's mental firmware is an innate ability to certainly communicate, but also to infer information from things and behaviors and, like I said, uh, voice, uh, vo in vocal intonation, uh, facial expressions, everything, uh, what you're wearing kind of thing, like what your appearance is, they oh, infer yeah. way more information than guys even. I don't think most guys are aware of just how much information women are open to just simply because that's just the way that they were born. That's just the way that they're, you know, they evolved was to, you know, understand when, a, you know, when a hot girl walks into a, a, a party or something and they're, you're, they you got your girlfriends that are all there. What's the first thing those girls say? Oh, who, who would wear something like that? You know, the, yep. the first thing, they're like, oh, she looks like a slut, you know, that kind of stuff. Yep. And so that, why is that? Why is that the innate natural commonality amongst women to do things like that? Because they have a natural innate uh, proclivity, I guess, to un understand and infer things, whether it's accurate or not is irrelevant. They can the all school emotional like, response, but they, they do, they're more sensitive to that. And and the old school one was like, I think they would, the, the mothers would tell the daughter, look at his shoes. That was like, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. in the eighties, you know, they'd like, look at yeah. his shoes. If his shoes are tattered up and dirty, he doesn't have money. Don't trust him. Now it's like, look at his phone, look at his social mm -hmm. media. Check yeah. how many girls are liking his photos. Assumption. Yes. Who's yeah. who's commenting on his photos? Who's liking his photos? Who's this girl? Why is her account mm -hmm. on private? Why does she comment on photo one, three, seven, and eight? Girls like they're crazy. Like they mm -hmm. do this. They stop yeah. you. What is it about that image that triggered that response? Like you'll see, like I was telling you before, the guy who uh, I, I had him, I said, just you know, use this as your profile picture. It's just him, like with you know, his bare back looking behind him jumps up to you know suddenly he's got thousands of hits because of that rather than the you know i look like a a divorced dad look um because that infers different things it sends different uh, sub communications to women and then they get intrigued by that that's what i think that really really defeats guys or self defeats guys is they think that women should be just as rational and just as reasonable as as guys were they they're looking for a guy with tits is what they're looking for they're looking for a guy that they are a woman that they can relate to as if it's like a guy and they everything's on the table and there's no subterfuge and there's no nuance and there's no nothing it's just like what do you well you want to fuck yeah i want to fuck okay good, let's go you know that that kind of that that attitude that understanding that uh that women ought to be our equals but they are not our equals. They're compliments, but they're not our equals. Yeah. And they see things. They have different, like I said, innate proclivities. One of those is understanding what you're saying or, or deriving information from things that you might not necessarily be aware of. And that was a part of this as well as that, uh, the communication styles between men and women. Like men tend to be more overt. We tend to be in your face. We say what you mean and you mean what you're saying. Yeah. Whereas for women, it's it can be like emotional. It's it's underneath. It's covert. It's uh, like you, they infer meaning. Uh, like uh, I, I, again, the example is this: uh, you be in a, a group of girls, and another girl comes in and she talks with them for a little bit. And she leaves, and the the first thing she says, "Did you see that dirty look that bitch just gave me?" <laughs> and you're like right there, and it just happened right in front of you. And you're like, a, "Yeah, what are you talking about?" You know, 
but they saw that and they inferred that information from just that like it could happen in 10 seconds yep. and that's the and and they get that and then now it's like intrasexual combat you know comes after that and i don't think guys are really oh particularly if you're you know living behind a screen and you haven't been educated about this you don't understand what just happened yeah and you don't you, and you think well why wouldn't they just talk it out why wouldn't they just be reasonable rational men and it's you like know, no they're, they're not they're women that's how they do it <laughs> there was this one time i used to live on the western coast of japan in osaka osaka has kind of like the more of the artsy music scene in japan and mm -hmm. um, I used to like date this one girl at this like karaoke dive bar mm -hmm. and she's a real beautiful girl. And then I didn't know she, she was the bartender. And so this other girl I was with was like, hey, let's go to this dive bar. And I was like, yeah, sure. I didn't think the other girl was um, working as a bartender. Right. So I was sleeping with the bartender and then I was also sleeping with the girl that I went mm -hmm. there with. And we were sitting down on the couch. It was like this like more like loungy kind of place, right? Kind of like, you know, little like kind of more of a hipster vibe, right? So we're sitting on the sofa. The lights are really dark. And then the girl I'm with, she hits my arm and she looks at me. She's like, I don't like the way the bartender's looking at you. She's like, did you sleep with her? And I was <laughs> like, how the freaking heck did you figure this out? Like I knew I was busted, but you know, I, I stuck to my guns and I was like, no, 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 no. It's in your head. It's in your head. I'm, uh, I mean, <laughs> I mean, no, let's get out of here. Let's go to another bar. But mm -hmm. like I was, you know, I'm 34 now. I was 29 when that happened and I started studying body language at 27. So that happened. And I was just like, oh my God, like these, and, and the girl that I was dating with, this was like my BPD story. This was a girl who was mm -hmm. drinking a lot of alcohol, had a lot of like, you know, a lot of issues she, i found i saw some scars on her thigh from cutting herself but even this person who i from a red pill lens would look at and be like wow she's a dumb girl like you know she cuts herself she drinks alcohol but at the same time she was like razor sharp like i don't like the way that girl's looking at you i think you slept with her and i was and, you know i was like like i was like taken aback i was like that was a that was a super red pill <clears throat> that was a super red pill moment for me <clears throat> Yeah, I, I think that a lot of guys don't realize the just sort of the under the surface, under the current, uh, you know, communication that's happening right then and there, like right underneath. I, I, I tell guys this all the time. This is this is actually uh, I think this is a, a Roycey, um, you know, uh, one of his commandments, a poon, right, is is uh, don't, uh, you know, f overtly flirt with other girls. I don't always say, you know, overtly flirt, but I think that passive dread is something that you can definitely use. Well, what when guys, like when I talk, when I start talking about dread, um, particularly when it's passive dread, it's something that I don't think a lot of guys have patience for. Most guys don't have patience for learning this kind of stuff. They don't have, they don't have the patience. They certainly say, well, you know, women should just come over to my way of, of thinking, my way of talking. And if uh, it's like that direct approach, it's almost like mode one, right? It's How's almost that like working out for you. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, there, there are times where a direct approach actually works, but for you sure. have to understand that women like to think that they are figuring a guy out based on their feminine intuition. They like a mystery. They want intrigue. They want a challenge. They want some, they want to peel the layers of the onion away, right? They want to fit nothing. I've said this before. Nothing is more self-satisfying for women than to think that they have figured out a guy based on their, their feminine, you know, intuition, which is really their hypergamous filter to yeah. see if, is he really, are these really the cues Are this, why does, why is it that like certain shows like the bachelor or like, uh, what's the love, was it? Love uh, is love blind. blind. Why, why is it that these are so intriguing and they just, and women keep coming back to them over and over and over again? Well, there's that indignation part of their nature, of course, but it's, it stimulates the, uh, the, the hypergamous filter. It stimulates the indignation and, but where does that indignation come from? Trying to figure out real signs, trying to figure out, is this guy really what he says he is? And so there's that back and forth. It's, it's what I call the flow or it's like breadcrumbs, right? You, you leave just enough for her to, to be intrigued and to want to come and follow you along. Most guys don't have patience for that. They don't have, they don't want to learn body language. They don't care. They think that women should just, oh, well, here she is. She arrived on my doorstep. I guess I got a wife, right? And, and she should talk like a guy and everything should be just reasonable and rational. And, and, and if I reason with her, then all problems will be solved, right? Because open communication solves everything. Bullshit. You, know, you, you need know, to know how how women communicate. Go ahead. And no, and I was just gonna say, like what you said, like this. The biggest thing I think that you and I do to help men out is we teach guys 
from he doesn't get it to he gets it. And that is such like an like a, a, a thing that is very difficult to teach because there's so many little nuances in it. But once you get it mm -hmm. in true red pill fashion, like you, there's no going back. You, you're never going to unget it. You know what I mean? It's like, it's the little things like knowing that every girl kind of, every girl knows the latest Justin Bieber song. Every girl obsesses about her hair. Every girl, if her, if her nail polish is chipped right here, on a date, she's going to think the entire time you're probably looking at her nail polish and that you won't sleep with her because of that. Like, right. there's so many different oh. things that women – I mean, you live with two women. You you know this probably oh, yeah. more is better than most Actually, men out there. I actually live with three women now, but yeah, okay. <laughs> so, you know, I mean <laughs> – Until the duration is over, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, with that whole thing, a lot of guys don't have that privilege to go through the day-to-day -day life of being mm – -hmm. Not only living with women and understanding them, but also maintaining your masculinity while living amongst women is a daily mm. battle. Like you have to like, you can't, there's no like letting your hair down, letting your guard down with women. Like you always have to be on. And that's just, that's part of the masculine burden. Uh, yeah. I, and I think that, you know, when, when we talk about, uh, I, I guess, interacting with women today, uh, a lot of guys, particularly on the MGTOW side of things, particularly on the black pill side of things, they don't see the point in, in learning any of this and in even bothering with any of this. And I get it because uh, it, 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 it requires some kind of investment in learning this stuff. Like why would I want to learn what a woman, I don't care what women think, blah, blah. No, you don't think that you do, but you do because in some way, shape or form you will. He, uh, guys will always say like, you know, I, I'm not, I'm just simply not going to engage with women anymore. Well, that's next to impossible. If you have a mother, you have a sister, you have a, a female coworker, you have a female boss, you have whatever else, you're going to be dealing with female nature for the rest of your life. So just get used to that. And even if you don't want to use this to like better your sex life or your relationships or whatever else, you don't. Okay, fine. But maybe it maybe just knowing something about female nature, knowing something about how they, uh, how they understand you, how they, how they look at you, how they, how they perceive you, just knowing that maybe it helps you in your job. Maybe that helps you with your mom. Maybe that helps you with something else that has completely unrelated to any of this. But most guys like right now, like I was saying before is they, they don't have this education. They, that what we can, we take, we take it for granted because you know, I'm, I'm 50, I'll be 52 pretty soon. You're 34. Mm -hmm. Um, we have a different background. We have a different upbringing. We have a different life experience. And along the way, you know, the choices that we've made has put us into social situations where we've learned. We don't realize that we're learning because we are, you know, we're, we're social animals. We learn from seeing what other people are doing. And as men, we don't have those same innate proclivities that, that women do in, in that respect. So and um, when, when you ahead. learn this stuff, when you learn this stuff too, like, like, of course I've, I've taken it to help guys figure out which girls are bleeding them for free food, free attention, and which girls are genuinely interested in you. But what happens is you start learning that once you turn on this part of your brain, once you actually start looking for body language, the amount of doors that this thing opens is phenomenal. I mean, for me personally, what I like to watch, I like to watch the current um, you know, the, the beer bug pandemic, uh, up reports from the, from the white house. And I like to analyze mm -hmm. the body language of the different right. cabinet members, the president and stuff, because even these people, uh, there was a lady, she's the president of the IMF and you know, the IMF is the international monetary fund. And they're, they're, you know, let's be honest, they're a little, they're a little shady organization, but mm -hmm. you could see when they were asking her what she does is she quickly does a gesture that indicates nervousness, but you could tell she's a you know she's really sharp. She caught herself mid gesture and mm -hmm. and went back to like a neutral state. So you could see these little things. You'd be like, yo, this person. Mm -hmm. It's really gonna turn on a part of your brain. You'd be like, yo, this person's a dirtbag. They're pretending to be something mm -hmm. that they're not. Yeah, and dishonest cues is what it is. That's that's a that's another Joe Navarro thing. Did you see? I'm sure you did. And this is actually a really good example of this. Did you see? I think it was Trump was talking about uh, the the virus and everything. And there's that one guy, and I don't know who he was or whatever, but I I I know the face now because he did one of these things. Like he, he did a, a face palm kind of thing, uh, where his facial expression is like. Which guy was that? Was that I don't, know who it is. I don't even know who the guy is, but if you show me the picture, I will go, oh, yeah, I remember when that happened kind of thing. But now I've seen article after article <laughs> about like what that meant. Like, oh, he did a face palm when, when Trump said this. So that means that we're all doomed. We're all going yeah. to hell. <laughs> he knows that it's bullshit or something. You know what? I don't know, 
but just from that face palm thing. Now, this has nothing to do with body language mastery. It has nothing to do with, uh, with with picking up girls or anything, but just those things. I, what, look at the amount of literature. Look at the amount of reaction to that one facial expression or that one just you know gesture and it implies like so much so yes it is important to know these things it is important to think and that's and it's not just that i mean you 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 want to have a, a complete understanding of game you want to have a complete understanding of how to you know socialize and interact um in my first book i talk about buffers and one of the one of the places where you and i kind of disagree about is like what is a buffer and what's not a buffer i always say that you know texting oh an over reliance on texting yeah. can be a buffer so that's i just wanted to, to clarify that but um i think that one of the reasons why you have guys signing up for this is because for a very long time guys have used buffers and they get to a point in their lives where they go i don't know anything about i, I don't what does she mean about this or i'm sure you've had guys say this before and I'm, I'm about to move on to some of these pictures here just a second from from the body language essay that i wrote but um You'll have, have you had guys, I'm sure you have, have you had guys ask you, was this beta? What, what I did was what I did beta was what I did alpha. What do you think that she thought of this? Like these guys will like analyze their, their, their actions and what, like, they were like, I wish I had a video camera. I wish I had some like, you know, video recording of what I did so I could show you what happened. Was that beta or was that alpha? Um, do you have guys that do that? that yeah. And, and they, they, they tell me like, you know. Uh, this is typically guys who do this is guys who don't have a lot of volume. I'm a big advocate of volume as mm -hmm. in like, you know, stacking the pipeline. You know what I mean? Like you want to have multiple chicks that are on your sexual pipeline that are potentially ready to go on a date with you, come over and watch Netflix and chill, go with you to some events that can help you, you know, expand on social circle game. Right. But typically when guys ask me these kind of questions, I usually find out that it comes from a position of scarcity. They're only they they're, they're dating like one girl every three months, and so they'll be like, "Oh, you know, she was on the date and she went like this. She scratched her nose and then she touched her ear and then she went like this and then she crossed her arms." Am I alpha or beta? And I'm like, "Listen, dude, like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, you think you're you got a little bit of your wires crossed there, but um, you know, at the end of the day." I have realized because I've when I was younger, when I was uh, my early 20s, I fell into the whole is this alpha is this beta uh, kind of mindset. And that um, that mindset in itself is is relatively beta. Right. So, I mean, sorry to burst any bubbles see, out these there. Guys, do you see the guys in your because I, again, I, I audited the class a little bit to see if I wanted to endorse it this time. But like um, and I am just so everybody knows. Um, but in, in that last one, did you see guys who were like sort of over, like there was a paralysis by analysis where they like completely like, like they didn't want to do anything or they were like afraid of, of experimenting or afraid like, well, if I do that, then she's not going to like me and she's going to go away. Or like, are they, are they uh, yeah. an, over analyzing, I guess is what I'm Yeah. Cause typically guys who watch, you know, especially your material, you know, you get, you get the guys that are really, you know, the Japanese say like komakai. Like really attention to detail, really break things down to similar to like what you do in like pretty much your Twitter posts, your YouTube videos. And, you know, those guys who have those kind of questions, it's typically a lot of guys in our sphere that are overthinkers. There's a lot of smart guys in this sphere who are very logically smart, but like I said, logically smart. And socially smarter, two for two different things. I mean, one of the most common complaints you and I probably hear is like, why, you know, the guy said like, why would she like that guy? He's dumb. He's stupid. He doesn't like, you know, he's, he doesn't respect her and all these things. Like, because you don't get it socially, yeah. like socially, he's a genius compared to you. Yeah. I understand your IT certification and everything. You can code, you can write JavaScript, you can do whatever. You're great at Python, but at the end of the day, like, Chad's going to Chad. And mm -hmm. part of being Chad is having that social awareness. A, a Chad will walk up to a girl who's stunningly beautiful and look at her, kind of cross his arms and be like, your hair, they always have like dry split ends like that. And the girl will lose her mind because every guy in the party is going gonna, is gonna to say like, oh my God, you look so beautiful. Wow. Are you a model? Blah, blah, blah. Can I follow you on Instagram? In pro internally, she gets repulsed by that. But the one guy who walks up to her, looks at her, is like, come on, like, 
you know, you, mm. you don't impress me. And like, why, why does your hair like that? Or like, do you always color your nails that way? These little things that are super yeah. signs of social genius. A lot of the guys, you just don't get it. Yeah. I, I, that's fine. I was just looking at, um, the Twitter account of, I think it's like got pickup or something like that. I forget, but every once in a while he'll, uh, I don't know who the guy is, but every once in a while he'll, he'll put a link in one of his tweets. And there's this one about like, uh, negging, negging girls. And I think that what's funny is like a lot of guys go, Oh, that's just pickup our stuff. You don't want to do that. You just talk to her and she'll like you and everything will be okay. But like, they don't understand that a lot of game is very counterintuitive to guys. Yeah. Like, they're like, well, you don't want to insult her. You want to tell her she looks nice. You want to take her to the dance. Right. And <laughs> so, so, um, but, but it's very counterintuitive that a girl like that, that is what makes you the purple cow. Right. All these guys want to go and they want to tell her she looks good and they want to tell, you know, oh boy, you're, she has all these beta orbiters that are like giving her all of this attention. You come in there, you know, you look good enough and then you go, yeah, hey, you know, and you drop an egg hit of some sort. A lot of guys like think that an egg hit is just like, hey, bitch, you know, you look like hell. You want to get after it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> they think that that's what it's all really about. And they think the only reason guys are successful at it is because they're these big, you know, alpha chads or whatever. It's like, no, no, it's there's a psychology that is a part of that. And you know what? Sometimes that psychology requires you to actually have some sort of intelligence and some sort of investment in educating yourself about that. But rather than do that, they're just like, no, oh, no, it's just, just chads. And they're just, you know, they can just say, hey, hey, bitch, want to screw? And they'll go, yeah, of course they do. That's, that's not how it works. There is actually psychology that is underlying that. And it takes some effort to really understand those things. And maybe it's a class. Maybe it's something that you're doing. Maybe it's reading my book. Maybe it's, you know, just reading an article to really understand what it's all about. But there's more to it than just like what you, well, you know, girls just like that kind of guy. Well, why? Like dig under. Why are you not curious about this? Why do you not want to to to, to learn about this? I want to um I want to move on to uh just a few things about body language. These are these are the basics, um that I I learned really from all of these uh, pictures that were sent to me to so that I could sort of compile this essay. And I I got them uh, called up here. I'll, we'll we'll go through like these are the most common things that I see according to uh, guys sending me pictures, but also I should say that when I'm on promos or when I'm working, uh, I'm doing things like out in the, out in the field, really, as I, I, I consider myself kind of like a, a social scientist, like a, in a very loose, stupid way. Um, I, I'll go to events, I'll be out where people, where guys and women are connecting and they're coming out. I will look and I'll listen. And I'm just sort of a student of, of human behavior when I'm out doing these kinds of things. So from that experience and from the, uh, the pictures that I've been sent. Uh, or, oh, the other thing is this, is remember that at no other time in history could we be doing this. We yeah. would not have the same amount of access to like people's personal pictures, their casual pictures in the same way that we have access to them now in the You'd internet. You'd have to mail them. You'd have to mail. Yeah, exactly. Any and and if you if you went back even just like ten or fifteen years ago, you wouldn't be able to have nearly the kind of access to these pictures that we do now. We take yep. this shit for granted right now. We go, well, yeah, of course, everybody has you know, digital digital cameras. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to understand that digital digital imagery or digital cameras didn't even exist in like well, that maybe loosely they existed in like the late nineties, but not on the internet and not the way that we have them right now. So now we have access to these images and we can look at them and we go, we can look at the commonalities and that's, I just want to explain that because that's where I'm coming from. When I came up with these commonalities and the things that I'm about to show you here from, from body language. So the first one is the lean in like guys leaning in. And I, I started with this because this was something that uh, Royce used to say back in the day is like that leaning in a guy leaning in to a, to a woman when it's a picture or whatever, that is the hallmark of a beta male. That is the guy who is who is trying to press himself into that person. Do you want to talk about that real quick? Well, I, uh, yeah, because you, you what do you call it? M mommy, the mommy pose or well, something? That, that, that's something different. But the lean in is something that's common to all to, to the mommy pose, but to all other all it's sort of like the the basic uh, the basic lean in. And then there's other additions to that. But go ahead. Yeah, like, well, what you can do is I'm one of my favorite things that I like to do recently is just to look at celebrity photos and just to understand, okay, this this is a photo of a, like, a, for example, like I think Rolo and I, especially you, Rolo, we've been calling this whole Meghan Markle debacle from the get-go. Well, yeah, and you can see body language in, in these two, yeah. Yeah, and, and when you see a guy leaning in 
like it's an over supplication that to the common man they would think like what do you mean i don't i don't see what you're talking about but as their relationship typically unfolds i mean you know people get divorces in hollywood like like every day i mean these were these relationships probably have a shelf life of five years max so you can kind of see and test this out on your own but we usually see this coming from a far far away you know uh, you know, there's one of my favorite guys right there. So Drake, right? Drake, yeah. if you just listen to the lyrics in Drake's music, it is some like Drake really made me lose a lot of respect for hip hop. He mm. is truly the number one guy who took alpha male, you know, gangster rap to like the simpiest simp of all time. I mean, what, listening to his music, I can't even believe that men listen to it. And like I said, you can see here he's leaning in. You know, you could give a bit, you could give a beta male status and money and all this stuff. And yeah, Drake probably has tons and tons of chicks, but at the end mm -hmm. of the day, a beta is still a beta. Right. And this, and that, this, that's it, a, a just real quick. Hold that thought. I, I, one of the things about like Drake, Drake's a good looking guy. Okay. He, he doesn't have to do this. Oh but yeah. This is something that is innate. This is something yes. that's in his brain. Like, this is what I do. And like, okay, before we go and we look at any more of these pictures, a lot of guys are going to say, well, that was the photographer. He was telling him to do that. No, if you nope. go and you look, I, I, I can't show every single picture that I saw of Drake doing this. This is something that is a natural sort of subconscious behavior for him. And it's a behavior that a lot of guys share. Now, when you go and you look at this one here with, um, with uh, Meghan Markle and, and Prince Harry there, like, oh, okay, well, that was there. That was just them, uh, you know, posing for a wedding shot or, or this is the, the royal couple kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. you, there's, the, the thing is this, is that why is that a thing? Why would, a, why would any photographer tell a guy, hey, lean in, lean into her? Why, why is it, the, if we're going to say that it's the photographer doing it, okay, I, I'm almost willing to accept that. But why does the photographer think that that's what he should be doing? That's also part of the same mindset right there. So, um, so you got, I, I don't know who this is right here as well, but like you will see the lean in uh, as part of pretty much all of these right here. And really, it's the guy trying to push himself into that woman's frame, push her, push himself into like, like I, I, I got this chick kind of thing. Excuse me. Now, in the uh, in the other one here with uh, with the Asian girl and this guy, you're also seeing sort of the arm block there. That's a yeah. that's another another body posture that I, I talked about quite a bit. But um, you'll see the lean in a lot. Like Prince Harry is easy because when you look at like all the casual shots of him, or if you see casual shots of of uh, like famous people, like Drake's a, a good example of this. You will see that their habit is to do that. If you look, and I'm about to show some here. If you go and you look at the images of like Justin Bieber and his, yeah, oh my now, God, his, oh. It, it, it's and you, with this Asian girl too. There's little things here that guys probably in the chat did not pick up. First of all, she's looking up and away from him. This is oh, yeah. kind of a, a repulsive manner. Mm -hmm. Secondly, her hair is blocking her neck. And mm. that right there shows you that she is not 100% feeling safe and comfortable with this guy. Because at the end of the day, a lot of girls, they take beta males because they can't get an alpha. They settle. You know what I mean? And so this right here, you could see that the, the, the attraction is, is not, it's not there. And mm. I'm telling you, what you guys can realize is like, Go on for you, for you guys that have friends, you know, I'm pretty sure you guys have friends that are couples and you can know you look at a friend, you're probably like, yeah, that's Steve. He's like super beta and his wife like always, you know, makes him, you know, basically runs the relationship, right? It cucks mm -hmm. him, whatever we want to say. Go look at their Instagram, look at the photos. And I guarantee you it's pictures of like her and him in a position that she's the dominant and he's the supplication compared mm -hmm. to other guys. You probably know some guys, the man is the alpha in the relationship. Look at their photos and you can see the big difference there yeah. as well. Now, here's the, this is the second one. Now, of course, this is also the lean in, but yeah. this is also the lean out from the mm -hmm. girl. And yeah. I, again, I don't know who that, I'm sure this guy right here on the, on the left-hand side is famous. Somebody in the chat will tell me who this guy is, but, yeah. um, so I'm looking at uh, I'm, I'm, when I see this, this was the reason I put this out there is because not only do like beta males tend to lean in women when they're unsure of that guy, when they're unsure of their attraction with that guy or when the guy is sort of their the, the, uh, the a woman's unconscious recognizes that guy as the beta. That's a natural like to, to pull away 
to 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 get away like you I, that's a good that, that's a good observation i didn't think about that with the hair like put the hair between yeah. between you and the guy who is and again this is these are subconscious behaviors the subconscious behavior of the guy is that oh i really want to be with her like if you like justin bieber is like a classic example of this because in damn near every photo of him and this girl or any girl for that matter he's always leaning in he's never in a position of power and then pretty much in all of these if you look at the woman who's looking away um like the one on the left here this girl right here um uh there it is this girl chick right here um if you look at her okay you, you have to take the body language also with the expression as well yeah so when you're looking at this and what does that say to you? Now, this is this so, is yeah, this is get him off of me is what this is. Yes. Like you can see she's leaning away mm -hmm. and she has her right hand on his chest, kind of Perfect. like a protective barrier. Okay, when mm -hmm. a woman likes you, she's gonna be loose. She's gonna let everything kind of let it all out, if you will. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But here she's one of two things. She's leaning away. She's got her right hand on his chest, kind of keeping a protective barrier. Mm -hmm. And she's also looking at the cameras. Clearly, she's at the VMA Awards. She's looking mm -hmm. at the cameras to get some clout for her personal attention, her personal right. brand. That's a big part of it, too. Yeah, the whole thing. is, and, and what's funny here is, again, this is the subconscious communication that she is. These are subcommunications right here. Her expression, her, her body position is a subconscious uh, reaction really to his behavior, which is I'm going to lean in. I really like this girl, you know, that kind of, <laughs> that kind of like beta male, like, Oh, I finally got with her. I need to show. And it, the, the problem that I have with a lot of these, like when people were sending me all of these, uh, these, uh, uh images was so many of them were like this. So many guys and not just famous people. I'm talking to just average people were doing exactly the same thing. And it, also, also, if you look at uh, Justin Bieber here uh, on this side, um, he's also doing the arm block. This is a mate guarding position as well, which I'll show you here in just a second. The next one is these guys right here. And again, this is I, I put this in here specifically because it's a lean out. But it's also that hand block. See, in all of each one of these, where there's a there's a hand block in each yep. one, every single and, one. And I'm not saying like if people say, well, you don't think that that girl is attracted to that guy on the far right there? I'm like, yeah, she probably is, but she knows the camera is on her. And in all of these, remember the women are women are hyper conscious of where a camera is sitting at all times. And, and so the hand the hand placement, I'll say this: mm -hmm. if a girl is down and she's into you, that hand is probably going to go across your stomach and more of a possessive manner. She's mm -hmm. going to be like as if she's hugging you, holding yeah. you. This we'll show one alpha, is more we'll show alpha tells here in a second, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but this one, what you can see, I didn't even know you are going to pull this up. This is perfect. <laughs> like you can see on the left with the white girl, on the middle with the, the blocked out face, and on the right with the black couple. Mm -hmm. All of these are the same kind of distancing gesture. And you can see, look at the guy's pink shirt. There's a little friction there as well. This is not a lightly placed hand. This is like, okay, like keep your distance to an extent. Compared to, look at the guy in the middle, over commitment, leaning in, double arms around her, extreme mm -hmm. possession, and kind of coming down to her level, kind of hunching over and kind of like this is like if you could if you could like personalize a scarcity mindset mm -hmm. into body language, the guy in the middle perfectly embodies it. That's yeah. a big thing right there. Yeah. And and the next the next set I'm gonna I'll I'll get into. We're gonna we're gonna talk a little bit about like where the camera is and where the eyes are because the eyes are very important in all in pretty much all of these. Whenever it's a couple's position, uh, if you look at the one uh, on the very left here with the the captain and Tennille here, these guys, um, mm -hmm. the guy is always smooch. This is this is the I love mommy pose. Um, we'll, yeah. we'll talk about that in just a second, but look where the eyes are. The eyes are always where the camera is. Now, I've, I've talked to Rich Cooper about this, and he's been really kind of hyper aware of this as well, which is um, in the day, in, in the era of Instagram, um, men have become Instagram boyfriends, meaning that the, the girl is, is uh, you know, mugging for the camera constantly, <laughs> selfies or whatever. You can be on vacation and you can't get away with it. It's get so away pathetic. <laughs> yeah. And so you have and, and it's it's a thing. It's online. Go go Google Instagram boyfriends. I'm sure there's probably a collection of like a Tumblr collection of some sort, like probably a big one of oh, guys yeah. just going there and taking pictures of their girlfriends on the beach, you know, mugging from the camera, laying in the surf somewhere, you know, wherever they happen to be, you know, looking good. And 
like uh, guys will say, well, yeah, I'm a good boyfriend, man. I mean, I do what she wants me to do. She, she wants to look good for her friends and her fans online. And you know, she's an influencer. And it's like, no, she's advertising is what she's doing. She's advertising in a sexual marketplace. So if somebody comes along who is better than you, you're going to be the guy who actually does the advertising for her because you are the one who is stupid enough to go and be her Instagram boyfriend or yes. you're the one stupid. And even if that's not the case, you're still the one who is feeding that attention need that she really has. Did you, did you read that story about Stephen Curry's wife when she was saying like, she really felt like once she was married and she had kids and she's Stephen Curry's wife, she, everybody knows who she is. She's, she's a, um, she's a famous, uh, you know, he's a, he's a basketball player for a golden state warriors. Um, and so, you know, and very, you know, he's going to be a hall of fame player at some point, if not already. Um, but her, she was complaining about how like she really wants attention. She really needs attention and how like even being married to Stephen, Stephen Curry is not enough for her to to feel like complete or fulfilled and she hates the way that she feels because she feels like she needs that but and then well, what does Stephen Curry says well I'm, I'm always behind her I want to support my wife she can go do what she wants you know she can do these things it's like no dude you're that's a, exactly the opposite of what you're supposed to be doing because there's yeah. always that advertising there's always that need like I've said this before and if you've read my first book you already know what I'm going to say it's it's that attention is the coin of the realm in yes. girl world okay that is straight out of my book I came up with that okay yeah. um, so when I say that I, I've always said that attention is something that is an innate evolved need for women indignation is another thing but attention is always something attention is how women determine um, uh, dominance hierarchies with other women who who can generate the most attention from the most guys and the guys whose attention is of the highest quality so if you've got like beta orbiters and they're all schlubs nobody you know, that's low quality attention and maybe that accounts for something but if you've got w the attention of one guy if you've got the attention of like chris evans or chris hemsworth or you know uh you know tom brady that yeah. that counts for you know a hundred low quality attention guys but there's so there's that's the that's what what uh, regulates that and in again in no other era have we yeah. had the access for women to have that kind of attention so when you see these pictures, when a camera is out, when a cell phone is out, women know exactly where each mm -hmm. camera is. And so the guy's like, you know, smooching on a girl and she's like, she's like, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they know what they're doing. And, and you know, like for, for women. Okay. So for men and women, you have to, for you guys, I'll break it, I'll break it down super seriously or super simple for you. Okay. For what men value sex as, women value attention, okay? No matter how much sex you get from, if, if a new hot 23-year-old showed up at your house every day as a man, you really wouldn't mind. You'd be like, yeah, this is great. This is great. Like, keep them coming, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with a female. She sees Stephen Curry, right, mm -hmm. getting uh, all of these like incredible amounts of attention because he, you know, he dethroned LeBron James. Basically he was the guy who like beat LeBron James into irrelevancy. And, um, you know, he's getting tons of magazine coverage, tons of news coverage, social media, you know, sponsorship deals, attention, 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 nonstop. Mm -hmm. And she has a little cooking channel, which is fine. But she has to deal with that. Another thing has to do with that is like that's just part of American culture where she sees like all this girl power and like look at these J-Lo's like how how J-Lo is getting attention when she's 50 something. It it's just blows my mind. But like the fact mm -hmm. that she's dealing with a culture where women are constantly propped up, you know, the Taylor Swift's, the Katy Perry's, the mm -hmm. whichever the Kardashians you want to Jenner's, whichever of those people you want to choose. Right. She's comparing herself to those people. And like, let's be honest, one of the most toxic places to ever have a relationship, Southern California. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So, I mean, in regards to her, her mindset, when she comes out and she says that I can completely understand why she says that. But at, at the end of the day, if if you're looking for a girl who wants to be in an LTR, if she's constantly looking for this nonstop attention hose, it's not going to lead to a good thing. Just like, quite honestly, if a guy wants to get 
in a relationship with a girl, but he's just like can't stop womanizing, can't stop going to clubs and stuff. It's going to be a little harder for that guy to be in an LTR. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I, this right here um, is from the section of that essay uh, about I, I titled it The Eyes Have It. And this is what I was talking about just a few minutes ago is that look where the eyes are in all of these images. Okay. Oh, yeah. but if you say, like you could, you could make an argument that the one here on the right hand side, Oh, well, that's a, that's a, a pose po position. Yeah. You, you see the, uh, the, the wedding ring right there. Um, mm -hmm. the, the wedding rings right here. Um, and then in the other one, it's, you know, here she is just sort of mugging, mugging, for the, mugging for the camera kind of thing. But where are the eyes? Now, the reason why the eyes are very important here is because, and, and if you know anything about classic advertising, particularly from like the 70s and the 80s, a lot of, a lot of feminists from this time really had a problem with uh, sort of male dominated ads. If you went and you look through ads in a magazine at this time, it was the man who was looking out at the audience or looking out at the viewer of that particular ad. And it was usually a woman who was like sort of clinging to the guy or the, the woman who was sort of mooning for the guy. It was almost the, the gender swap of these of this set of pictures right here. And women, or feminists of that time, the, the Gloria Steinems of the time, lost their minds over this kind of stuff because this is what we're teaching men that there should be this way. And everything has changed. I mean, so thoroughly everything has changed. And you can see the differences. If you go back and you look at those, those, uh, I, I probably should have included this in the actual essay, but if you go back and you look at like, say some, some magazines from ads from the seventies, particularly alcohol ads and cigarette ads at that time, the man is always looking out. And one of the things that the, that the feminists of that time said is that the person who is looking out at the viewer is the one that has the power. Yes. And that's what was throwing these. That's what was making the feminists insane at the time because all oh, the men are always have the power and all of these and the women are looking up and everything is a gender swap of exactly this dynamic from the 70s that they complained about right now. And the, here's the thing. It's in every casual photo now. It's not advertising, although that's true. It is in advertising as well, but it's in every casual or or modeled photo right now where the woman is looking at the camera because women naturally know where the attention is coming from. It's coming from that little eye hole on the, uh, on the, on the cell phone camera. So they know where to look or the lens of the camera, wherever that is, they know where it is. And therefore they're looking out. They, first of all, that's a power dynamic thing right there. And then in all of these, look what the men are doing in all of these. Uh, uh, it's these terrible. Are, the guys leaning in, mooning, uh, kissing on her at the same time, she's looking out. And in that, I don't know if you guys can read that right there, but in the, in the middle and the center here, it says this, it says, I have literally been making this man chase me for years, years and years. And I'm finally tired of running. I'm ready to start my life the way it was meant to be. I love you. Uh, right? Does that sound sincere? But looking so at, that, look at that. Look at that. <laughs> look at the facial expressions. Yep. It's okay to make inferences from facial expressions, right? Is that is that someone who, like to me? This is the face of a woman who is in her epiphany phase, and she found her beta in waiting. She finally let that guy, you know, be the one to sort of come in and support. I I, I was I was joking about this. Like when I when I first saw this, like I said, how how much you want to bet this is a single mother, right here. Oh wow! Now, I don't know. If she, I don't know if he is or not. And then, of course, there's the Asian girl on the on the right hand side, right there. That was from that same photo set that I had from the very beginning here. Oh, uh, was what it? What does that say to you? What does oh, that she, expression? Gina, say? Her far right is kind of like, ugh, get this guy away from me. Like, I can't believe mm -hmm. I have to sup like settle for this dork. That's mm -hmm. like it's just kind of like a. It's kind of like a uh like uh, like this is my this is my silver medal I have to put up with you know what I mean Yeah yeah this is the guy who is good enough he'll do yep. mm -hmm. yep. And then it's almost like I like here's that expression to me from the Asian girl on the right hand side says ladies I know he's not the best I could do but he'll have to do that's that's what that expression says to me. But if you look at these these images, and I looked at a lot of these, the the most common thing was when I was looking at these with uh, the where the eyes were looking, like especially this one right here on the right hand side. Does she want to bang me, or does she want to stay? Does she want to get with this guy? That's the image that like that's my my innate like instinctual understanding of that gaze, right? It's the gaze out. It's it's the power. It's a powerful position but it's also I, I i got this guy but guys i'm still available 
if you're still hot and you're still there, I'm I'm still available. This is the I'm still available look is what this is. I'm with yeah. a guy, uh, but I, I I don't want everybody to think that that I'm uh, you know I'm off okay. the market. Another thing is this: you could if you take a look at the girl on the left and in the middle. I covered this in the course. Those smiles are not authentic smiles. Those are okay. fake smiles. Those are mm -hmm. that's not real happiness. And again, it you see when I look at these uh, behaviors, I see three red flags in the left picture, three red red flags in the middle one. And to top it off, the girl in the middle, I don't know if you guys in the audience have caught this, but she's using one of those face filter apps that smooth out her face, yeah. make her eyebrows look better. And look nice. at her chin. Her chin is kind of little weirdly shaped. That's because she's turned her head at an angle and yeah. the, the, the AI hasn't fully captured and done its best job because it's mm -hmm. best when you look straight on at the camera yeah. so you can see all the deceptions there i mean anybody who's been dating using dating apps in from let's say i don't know tinder was pretty really hot in like 2014 to like 2017 but even then i mean how many guys put a one in the chat have you matched yeah. with a girl on social media or something or dating app showed up and she looks nothing like her pictures. If that happened, you press a one in the chat and yeah. that'll help you realize like, you know. <laughs> I got, um, okay. So here's the, here's the next, the next, the, uh, that was the eyes have it. So th th there's, there's something about like women knowing exactly where the camera is. It's another thing to be positioned by it. It's another thing to be in a casual, you know, environment where somebody else is taking a picture, but women just understand this. Women know where a camera is at all times. And if they don't, they get really upset. Yeah. Like if they have, like most women don't like to have their pictures taken if they didn't know it was being taken. If they know it is and they're they're cool with it, then that's when they shine. That's when they want to, you know. But they'll get really upset if their picture is taken and they didn't get to see it. Or the they ones are still coming in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so here's the next one. The next one is about mate guarding, and these are mate guarding behaviors right here. Yeah. And so let's put this one up. All right, so this is the funny one, right? I, I put this in as sort of a joke, but it, it's it is, but it's a, not a funny joke, okay? So this is a, this was a meme somebody sent me, or so I think I got it in Twitter or something. But you know, here you have the guy who looks like he's, you know, he looks like he's kind of happy. Yeah, I got married. He's a little bit shorter than she is, which is funny to me because most wedding photographers will try to, in some way, position the guy who to make him at least as tall, if not taller than the girl. Yeah. Again. You, this is a standard thing for wedding photographers. I know I've had to deal with enough of them in my life, but the standard thing is this, is that that's, there's usually, uh, when they're positioning a guy in a posed photo, when it comes to marriage and things like that, like if there's, if you're with a, it's a couple's photo kind of thing, whether it's an engagement photo or it's a wedding photo, usually the, um, the guy, the photographer, whoever it is, male or female, is going to say, well, you lean into her, look at her, that kind of stuff. And they will try to, that's one thing. The other thing is that there's this unconscious kind of uh, uh, standard, I guess, to make sure that the guy is at least as tall as her, if yeah. not taller. Even if the guy is shorter, they'll put him on a stool or they'll put him in such a way where she's sitting down and she's sitting down next to him to sort of like even out the height between the two of them. And why is that? Well, because we have this preconceived innate knowledge that women select men who are usually taller. Now look at on the left. Now you've got, or now you've or excuse me, the right. Now you've got the same girl with Rob Lowe. What's different between those two? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, on the left-hand side, she, a little micro expression is that her arm is on him not yeah. around him that's a dominance gesture and you could tell by her face she's clearly not happy compared to this one right on the right hand side that's mm -hmm. a genuine real smile she has her arm under his arm latched yeah. around him and you could see with her head she is leaning in towards him mm -hmm. versus him he's fully erect he's got his hands <laughs> over her he's yep. standing up tall he's his his smile is not as sincere as hers so i mean mm -hmm. it's like it's a huge difference here and like i said that's the, the only downside to studying body language is you can't turn off your brain there's no unlearning it once you see this mm -hmm. like you're in you know so you'll see it everywhere have you, have you seen have you and the, there's a lot of these but have you seen the um the pictures of jason momoa 
at like some like Comic Con and some of these ones where he like gets with the wives and the girlfriends of these nerds that go to like Comic Con and he's like this, he's got his arm around them and he's like pushing off the guy or like you know, he's like he's, uh, stiff arming the guys and yeah. it's mostly funny and Jason Momoa he knows his shit man. he knows this 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 is gonna trigger right and so so kudos to you uh, Jason Momoa for doing this but like. The guys who are there, they go, oh, it's all in fun. It's all in jest. But the guy, the expression on the guy's face is like, this is kind of messed up, you know? Or, or yeah. the girls and the girls can't keep their hands off of him because he's Jason Momoa, right? I mean, he looks good. And so when you look at the genuine expressions of like sort of delight when they're with a, a guy like Jason Momoa, now this is just Rob Lowe, but like he's still, that's a, that's a genuine smile. Not a not a staged kind of thing. Not kind of like when you're casual. That's why people kept giving me this, this grief about like, well, those are staged photos. You can't infer everything from a staged photo. This is one photo amongst many that have been sent to me that I used to sort of hand select the ones that I saw because I was picking out commonalities amongst all of these. So there's a certain uh, there, there's a, when it comes to uh, body positioning, when it comes to facial positioning, when it comes to subcommunications, um, men also do what's what we've talked about this a million times is mate guarding. And that mate guarding instinct comes out whether you realize it or you don't as a guy. Like if you're a guy and you have some sort of insecurity or you have some sort of suspicion about your girlfriend or your wife or whatever, that's going to be manifest in your behavior. And you don't even realize that you're doing these things because there you go. Um, you'll see, uh, and I, I mentioned this through most of these other pictures here, is you, you have that arm block. You have that grab the girl kind of thing. It's it, it, Even if you're not interposing yourself between you and the girl, you're interposing an arm. Uh, the the uh, one there on the far left here, let me grab, let me put this out here. I, I'm looking at it, but you guys aren't. There you go. Mm -hmm. um, you, the one on the far left here is, um, is of course, Anthony Bourdain and Asia Argento. Oh. She could care less yeah. about about Anthony Bourdain in this. She's smoking casually, just looking off like whatever. And look who's looking at, you know, you got, you got uh, the guy, like in most of these ones and the mate guarding ones, you'll see the guy looking out. He'll look, he'll look towards the camera because he's looking for, uh, he's looking for invaders. He's looking for somebody who's going to, who's going to take his woman. Yeah. And as a result, you will see either like what you were saying before is uh, the guy who's got his arm fully around the girl and there is, or else it's the arm block, which is what uh, uh, Anthony Bourdain is doing here with Asia Argento. He's mate guard. This is a mate guarding posture. The other one is that same couple, once again, the, the Asian couple, or the Asian girl and the guy. Again, he's done this in pretty much every single one of the pictures that I was sent uh, from this this group. Uh, he's got his arm, you know, trying to, you know, drag her into his frame. This is also kind of part of the lean in, like your part, your mind. I'm. I, it, Women like feminists will call this like sort of possessiveness or possessive action or possessive uh, body posturing or whatever. But it's mm -hmm. for men, it's really about mate guarding. Now, on the one, the last one here on the left, the guy in the red shirt, um, look at the expression on the woman's face. And then also, you also see what she's doing. She, she is subconsciously um, or maybe even consciously um, acknowledging that the guy is pretty much. Uh, caging her he's caging yep. her with his arms and so she's like she's got her hands over but that's not like oh i love him uh i want to get i want to get with him she's trying to lean out which you're also yep. seeing to lean out as he's trying to pull her and drag her into his into his frame really more or less. i have some here of like positive gestures as well from the the hug sure. from behind from a woman mm -hmm. it's like here's a really good example i'll just hit the share screen on my uh thing here if you could see this this girl on the right hand side, this is an example of a woman who is in the man's frame right. and, and she's totally into because she's leaning into him and he's standing up and erect. She's leaning back into him. His hands are around her and her hands are on top of his hands. This is a really positive example here. This one is too. When, he, when a woman is being held from behind, She's going to want to lean back and indulge more in the man's presence, not be like the one you had when the when the woman was like kind of like, you know, leaning away, kind of like, uh, you know, kind of using pushing away with her rear out of it. Yeah. So it's there. It's also the other thing is like this goes hand in hand also with the uh, the hand pushing the guy away. Is the 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 casual you know keep him get him off of me? It's what I call the get him off of me pose, mm -hmm. and and so there's there's the 
there's the guy who is doing the mate guarding behavior subconsciously, and then there's the woman's subconscious uh, reaction to what's really going on uh, from her peripheral awareness. So you see this, like this woman that's here on the on the far right hand side. She's doing the same thing. This is almost akin to that, you know, keep him at arm's distance, push him off, push him off, while still looking out at the camera, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, when you, you can even look through stock photos, and you could just see, like, you know even if there was chemistry between the models, even then when it's not supposed to be there, when you're looking at body language stuff. But I mean, I, I when you're done with all these pictures, I sent you a video and I, I know you probably have not seen this video before. I sent it in the private chat, but this okay. is probably one of the most beta male uh, rappers out there is a guy named logic. And I did mm -hmm. this exactly. I did this as a breakdown on my show with this episode, but you can, mm -hmm. I'll let you play. I want to get your live reaction from it. Cause it's, okay, we'll, it's, we'll get to it's that here. cringe. I just want to get to the, I love mommy part because I'm going to be remiss if I don't talk oh, about Oh yeah. This is, this, this is, is great. I love, and this is, <laughs> and I, guys can get me up. Though. They love this when I did this. this oh my God. The most common thing that I see in, in couples photos is the guy kissing on the girl and the girl is mugging for the camera or she's trying to get away from the guy or she like she looks fantastic and she's looking out at the at thing and the guy's like oh, yeah, my girl you know that oh. kind of, that's the I love mommy pose that's the that's the I, I want her I it God, it, it shows so much about the the psychologies between the two people who are in these in these photos. And we see this all over the place. So that's that's the first one. The next one is this one right here. And I, of course, I use the, the Ross mm -hmm. and Rachel one. And we think of that as, oh, that's so sweet. He really loves her. Whereas you've got like Jennifer Aniston, she even in a posed photo. Oh. Even when she's just sort of like, you know, she's loving, it's almost like a son and a mother in that case. And oh, that, that really kind of defines it. And so you've got a guy who's uh, otherwise, like, I, I don't know who the guy on the left is. I know he wrote that book, whatever, but, or excuse me, on the right, um, I'll, I'll, I'm sorry, on the left, the guy's leaning in. You can have the most masculine guys, otherwise most masculine guys in the world. Uh, the center one there is, of course, uh, uh, Wilson. Um, I yeah. Forget the uh, yeah, Russell Wilson, the quarterback for the, yeah. the, the Seattle Seahawks, and, and this and guy has Sierra, a story yeah. of being cucked. She oh, has really Sierra. positive masculine body language in this, and he is completely supplicating Beta. And I think he's like he's all about Jesus as well, right? He's like yeah. super Christian, yeah. yeah, very much so. And of course, she's oh. the she's the reformed, uh, you know, single mommy thought is what she was. You know, she was I think she was like a singer or something as well. But, you know, and they, of course, you don't for me to even like be critical of that. It's like, you know, guys will say, well, you know, they got a special relationship. OK, well, fine. That's how I'm looking at right now. I'm looking at the body language between these two. And so in the I love mommy pose, it's almost always with the guy who is sort of he's adopting the the little boy. Uh, or the kissy, you know, I, I love mommy kiss on her kind of thing. And this is so of of all the pictures that I got that I when I was doing the the build up for this and the compilation for this, this is the most common one from from couples, whether it's staged or it's not. This is the most common one, and in almost every one of them, the woman is either like sort of indifferent. Or she's looking out and she's mugging for the camera because she knows that the camera is on her. Yes, I know Jennifer Aniston and and uh, uh, what's his name, uh, David Schwimmer. I know that they are posed in this, but even in the pose, this is what it looks like. Even when uh, a, a couple are posed by a, a, a photographer or whatever, you still can't get past that kind of instinctual understanding of what the dynamic is between the man and the woman, yep. just based on like, look where the hand hands are, look where he's he's you know arm blocking her. That's almost like the the David Schwimmer one is almost like a, a mate guarding pose as well. But the I love mommy pose is the most common one that i've ever seen so uh so you said you said you put it in the the private chat was there a Ta yeah I, I i sent you a 48 second long youtube uh, clip uh so that's tell us what this is while i call it up well so what this is this is a hip-hop artist by the name of logic who is extremely beta male i mean if you i want you guys just to watch this clip with us and i called their divorce now but this happened before their divorce and i called it on my show and to top it off, if you watch him on Hot Ones, which is that there's a popular YouTube show where, like, they eat 10 wings with a progressively more hot and spicy uh, hot sauce on the wings. He's always talking about, oh, I do this for my wife and I'm, I'm the best man for my wife and talking mm. about all this stuff. 
and like how he's just total just supplicating Beta. It's almost cringe when he's mentioning it on the show Hot Ones. Mm -hmm. And this clip that we're about to show you, I mean, I know you probably never seen this roll over. I, 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 I just want to I want to get your organic um, reaction let me, from let me, this. Let me call up the audio here, and this was it's it, truly right? hilarious. So this is it, right? This is the right one. Yeah. Are you yeah. seeing this? Okay. Let me uh, yeah. let me make it full screen. Hold up. Yeah. This is so oh god. All right. Here we go. Um. I just leave it like this. It's only a few seconds, right? So let's do Dude, this. no, make, make it big, make it big. Try, make it big? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay. Right there. All right. Can we see that? Is that okay? Yep, that it looks good on my end. It's better. Okay, let's go with that. All right, so here it is. Hi, Jordan. <laughs> okay. All right, open your eyes. Are you fucking kidding me? Merry Christmas! Are you kidding me? Yeah. Merry Christmas! Yeah. I love you! Oh, Look, you got it! Do that. I love you! You're not the do that! I know, but it's all good. That's why I work so hard. This is great. I love you. I love you. Look, it's all yours. Oh, it's so cringe. Oh, look, bam! Look at this gentleman. Oh, no. thank you. It's yours. Go. Oh, wow. What do you what do you take away from that? <laughs> I don't see, like she's I, I think she's probably like when one of the things that I, I think that if, if a guy is a beta male guy or a guy, at least if a woman's subconscious recognizes a guy, pegs that guy, uh, perceives him as a beta male guy. And then when that guy does something like get on his knees to to propose, like that's I, I think that that is one of the worst positions. Like women fear that. That's almost like an existential fear for women to get involved. What I, I, actually it is. I've, I've written about the the existential fear for women. The existential fear for women is this: it's it's uh, that a woman would become involved by force or by choice or by like miscalculation, I guess to to be involved with a guy who is a beta male who is a guy who like have his kids and be locked down with a guy who her subconscious her id right like the id the ego and super ego her id yeah. says this guy's a chump this guy's not he's not fun he's not a he's not a like it's the hypergamous filter once again it's like he's not the one he's not the guy that you want to be doing this but what happens is once that guy like the guy who'll do good he's like the um he's like the the plan b guy once that guy does something like get on his knees and presents her with a ring or he buys her a very expensive gift such as a car that is one of the it triggers something subconsciously in women where they're just they, first of all they don't have to process it and then second of all it's like the, the the first thing that goes on in her subconscious whether it's her id or ego whatever the first thing that happens is oh my god i am more attached to this guy now or i have to i'm obligated to be this guy's woman now because he bought me a house because he uh he got on his knees and, and proposed to me on the big jumbotron at the hockey game whatever you know all that kind of stuff that goes along with that when that guy uh like we've seen i'm sure you've seen all, all kinds of videos where the woman rejects the guy who oh. is uh who's <laughs> proposing to that one this is this is great i wasn't expecting to do this but yeah. like i'm sure you've seen these videos and I, I i used a video in this i have a very old uh essay that's called the true romantics and i was trying to use this video to say like you know it is men uh, it is upon men it is be, uh, beholden to men to be the romantics they're the ones who have to in who have to keep it fresh who have to make do romantic gestures have to do all these things and it's not women who define what romance is it's men yeah. who. Do and it. with and with that clip right there i don't know if you know there's three there's three things that i saw red flags one mm -hmm. i don't know if you can't I, this was not smart this was not so much body language but he mm -hmm. said i love you three times, times and, yeah. he, and each one got more pathetic he's like i love you i love you and yeah, then he, he had to close the difference. Thinking. If you bought Mrs. Tomasi a friggin a, a Ford Focus, she would probably run up to you yeah. and hug you. Yeah, she yeah. stayed there in front of a hundred thousand dollar plus G wagon, and then yeah. he had to walk over to her, and then she gave him the friend zone hug, and that's his mm -hmm. wife. That's his okay. wife at that time. Yep. And because of course they got divorced. I called it, and some of his fans were like, <laughs> "Oh, you're just you're just jealous, bro. Because he's more alpha than you." I'm like, "All right, watch this That's happen. Cool. You're, you're you're jealous of his success." <laughs> yeah, logic. Yeah, I am. You you got me. <laughs> the, the the most telling thing is the three progressively pathetic mm -hmm. "I love you." It's like, "I love you. 
I love you, babe. I love you. And then she, finally, she re- she re- she says, "Oh yeah, I love you too." So in the in in the uh, in the essay I was telling you about the the true romantics, I used a video of a guy who was like proposing to a woman at the mall, and the woman rejected him. Like he went, he got, <laughs> he got like a, he got like a mariachi band or whatever. Like he and he was like making that like all big public display. That is like especially if it's oh coming God. from a guy who is uh, the. Uh, I think what what happens for women when they get into that position is the reason they hate that so much is because there's so many people f- looking at them right. and she has to be the public bitch to say no. And people, you know, so most, you know, for the most part, you know, most women will sympathize and say, well, she doesn't want you. Oh, well, you know, but like putting her on the spot like that and obligating her to say yes or obligating her to say, I love you. She never said, I love you back to him once in that whole thing yep. and she was like she uh said it, at the end after he forced it, it out of her three yeah, times squeezed it out of her yes <laughs> yes, yes. well it's not I, worth the squeeze in that one <laughs> so, but, but what's the uh so what's the what's the dynamic behind that is she is with a guy and of course she's divorced from him now who her subconscious says this is a beta male this isn't somebody i want to breed with this isn't somebody i want to have babies with this is not somebody i want to live the rest of my life with but now i've got this very expensive land rover now i've got this very expensive house now i said yes to all this and i'm committed to this now i have to uh, at least put up the appearance that i'm with this guy because really i mean you think about it this way she's with him based on a transactional nature, not on a validational nature. She's with him because he can afford to buy her cars. He can afford to put her in nice houses and everything else. But yep. it's the obligation. When you, ob- like women absolutely hate to be obligated to desire. They have to, they hate that. That's why I keep saying you can't negotiate desire because right. when you because when you do negotiate desire and a woman acquiesces to that, when she accepts that, then you're basically obligating her to at least pretend that she's really into fucking you, that she's really into you. She really wants to be with you. And that is a position that is innately and innately conflicts with women's nature, their desire, nature, like who they want to get with and, and their evolved mental firmware. That's why they have that reaction. So that was, yeah, I, I, I say like, uh, <laughs> you know, with, with all of these things, um, like I said, you could go, there's such a rabbit hole you can go down in regards to body language. And then, you, like, just as a common sense guy out there listening, why would the FBI, why would the NSA, why would the CIA, why would the United States military and all of these global intelligence mm-hmm. agencies pour billions of dollars into body language training? If you don't, I mean, facial recognition technology and AI, I mean, you think this is all just, we're just making it up. So you buy a copy of the rational mail, like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. you know, our grift is not that, not He's that good. good. But yeah, that's not, yeah, we're not, that, we're not that well. well, and that's funny because and I'm, I've seen, like, when we first started, of course, everybody in the chat was like, oh yeah, buy his, buy his uh, formula, buy his, his, his product and you'll be a master of body body language it's like well you know what it's not just about getting laid it's not just about relationships that's what you're talking about yeah but if you go and you read joe navarro's book mm-hmm. it's about a whole lot you maybe that's, that's one that's one fraction of that book that's you know, the book that put me on the path what everybody mm-hmm. is saying by joe navarro that's the one i read that when i was 27 and then i used to do because you know we talk about the high frequency of meeting people i was working at this uh Akaiwa, it's english teaching school and every day you would get one to four new people fed to you to teach in 40 minute increments and you got eight groups every single day and usually there were new people lessons on like they only go to english lessons on uh you know monday so i would get a new group of people on monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday so i read this book what everybody's saying by joe navarro and I studied it because I have my I have my degree in psychology, and so I've been studying psychology since I was you know, Jesus, how was I was nineteen year old when I when I started first with like uh, please understand me, and when you learn this stuff, at first it's really overwhelming, right? Because you you can't oh, yeah. turn off this switch. You're like, oh my god, like like you you don't like uh, to be honest with you, like I see signs of attraction coming from women that are like friends with my like a good friend like and i like they're engaged and i see her 
we'll be at a club having a couple drinks and she'll reach under my tie and kind of pull me towards her or she'll start doing some subconscious signaling to me. And I'm like, good Lord, this is uncomfortable. Right. So it's not, it's like, this is like one of the most ultimate red pills you can get is once you start studying body language and there's going to be in the future, there's going to be like a contact lens you can put on and inter interpret people's body language. But until then we don't have that technology, but the best thing we was, I was able to do was hire a model and have her perform these gestures. And I was flirting with her behind the camera to really get her organically into it so you can get the best quality video production in regards to translating that emotion in the moment universally and, you know, like uh, timelessly mm -hmm. through video. You know what I mean? So right. I think that with, with, uh, with body language, it can be beneficial to any type of guy in any walk of life. But it's really, to be honest with you, it's a great little hobby too. I just love watching. I think one of my favorite things is watching. Um, I don't know if I should say who it is, but I, I see certain certain Twitter personalities that I definitely know have a drug habit just by uh -huh. watching them <laughs> like tweak yeah. out, and people yeah, don't and realize don't, it. They certainly behave like they do. So yeah, I and, mean, oh, what's funny to me is uh, is uh, let me put this back here a second. I want I want to I want to I'll be. I have to end on this uh, particular one here. But what's funny to me is that on some level of consciousness, when you see a guy that you think is tweaking, right? Or when, like, I've, actually, I live in Northern Nevada. I, there are people here who tweak, right? You know when somebody is not right. We know when certain behaviors don't click. Like, when somebody is, is like, talking to themselves or they're, like, uh, they're some, in some way mentally disturbed, we have, as part of our, our, um, our evolved mental firmware, we understand, we should anyways, we understand when a person is not acting right. We understand usually when a person is drunk. We understand when a person is like, when they're, you know, when they're weaving or they're slurring their words, or we understand when they're talking really fast and they're, you know, and they're, they're like on crank or something like that. You know, we, we kind of, we go, okay, what's wrong with you, man? You know, you're not acting like you usually are. Usually what this is, it's, it's our peripheral awareness telling our consciousness hopefully if you're listening to your instinct because peripheral awareness is instinct is saying there's something that's going on around here that doesn't add up and for most human beings we have what's called a revulsion response like if we uh, if we see a dead body or we see something that looks unclean or we see you know dog poop somewhere we go away from it if it smells bad we, we we're repulsed and revolted by that there's all that's and those are the easy illustrations of it we also are repulsed by people who don't behave correctly like they have something that's wrong with their their speech and maybe there's maybe they're just fine maybe they have like an impediment maybe there's actually something wrong with them and you have to but the innate response is that there's something wrong with this dude there's something wrong with this yes. chick i don't get it and you're and that's your instinct saying watch out back up back up off of this and and don't interact don't make eye contact you know that kind of stuff and say move on and you will survive because in our ancestral past the, the human beings that did that that obeyed that repulsion re revulsion response they went on to let their genetics go on into the next generation and the ones who didn't died usually from like getting killed by an insane person or by dying from dysentery or from plague or whatever else because they they didn't listen to that instinct so remember that when you you see people talking a certain way they're acting a certain way they're uh and it might not they don't have to be insane they could be try like uh one of the things that joe navarro tries to figure out is what how people are lying to you what do people do like when they're lying to you right mm -hmm. or uh one I, when i saw his uh his con his conference talk he was talking about like how when people like do the steeple like this kind of stuff and like what that means or when people like i do this all the time like I, this is like my now if you look at my my uh my pictures for my thumbnails for for the rational yeah. mail i have that one where i'm doing i'm doing like this i don't i'm not i didn't plan to do that that's just something i do it's kind of like the triangle or you whatever call up rich cooper like hey rich is this alpha yeah i, yeah, I didn't call it exactly <laughs> Exactly. I, did, I do this when I'm in my picture. <laughs> I didn't do that. Or the other one, which I'm sure you're going to talk about. I, I want to put this up here. This is Vince Castle, by the way. These are alpha tells. These are like things that we see. We go, okay, that guy seems like he's got his shit together. He seems like he's a he's in control. He has a frame. Uh, one of the other things, like we're talking about hand gestures. Another one is this, and this was a big thing that went, went through the pickup artist community back in the early 2000s, was shaking hands with a guy in an alpha fashion. It was always like the hand over kind of. Yeah. Uh, Kind of thing. And I, I do that and I didn't realize I was even doing that. And I didn't even think that that was like a, I'm like, 
well, that's just the way that I, I, I shake hands, right? That's yeah. what my dad taught me to, to do it, right? So that's that's how I, I do it. I didn't realize that that was an alpha gesture. Or, yeah. and this was in your body language mastery, was like putting your hand in an over position when you're holding hands with your woman, your girlfriend, yeah. whatever. I've always done that with every chick that I've ever done. I didn't realize I was doing that until I started learning about body language and I understood. So these are behaviors that are really kind of subconscious or unconscious that we don't really realize. And so maybe it's not, it doesn't feel natural to you to do that. Maybe you need to start learning that. And that's what I want to talk about here in a minute. But uh, so these are, these right here are, um, I, I use Vince Castle because I really like Vince. Uh, he's, he's close to my age and he just got married to this chick. I don't know her name, but she's a, a hammer. And uh, she is, I think she's in her twenties. I think she's like 23 or 24 or something like that. So there's like almost a 25 year difference between these two. Oh, yeah. And Grant, he's famous. Okay. Granted, he's a, he's an actor. He's a, and, and a pretty good one too. But if you look at how, uh, and, and this is true of like any, any, image. I got some other images here to look at, but like I use Vince Castle cause I think he's a pretty, he's a pretty good example of like an alpha guy, right? He doesn't have to be, he's not the stereotypical Chad. But he's kind of like the older, more refined Chad. And if you, another guy that you guys might want to look up is a photographer. His name is Steve Lyons. Really, for an older guy, that dude is like, he's what alpha Chads become when they get to be about 58 or 59 years old. Um, but like, look at the body language here and look where he's doing. Like, he's he's the one who's kind of indifferent. She's the one who is, is you know, cutting his hair because she's, you know, that's her man, right? And here's the, this is the other one that I wanted to do is if you look at like okay the one here is sort of we we know it's staged but again look at the dynamic she's looking up at him she's like you know she wants to lick his face or whatever he's looking out at the camera who has the power in that yeah. position who is it? and when she, like here you go and this is I, I included this on purpose is and i think this was before they got married and they were just dating or whatever now in this position he's looking at her and she's looking at him she's not looking out at the camera she's not going uh, and, and again, I would presume from the pictures that I got that this was a casual shot and she's looking at him and she is just enamored with this guy. And when you have frame and when you are in an alpha position, the woman is going to be looking at you more naturally in picture. I'm not saying every picture is going to be like that. Obviously, if you're going to do a portrait or something and somebody's taking a picture of you like in, you know, at the beach or whatever, that's that's one thing. But another thing is that when you have casual pictures like this, yeah, he's holding her. He's got her. You could say, well, oh, he's trying to do a mate guarding thing. No, look where her arms are and look where her eyes are. And look where the, the body positioning is in this. This is a woman who knows that she's with a guy who is a high value dude. She doesn't care about where the cameras are because her focus is on that guy and staying in that guy's frame because that's where she wants to be. She doesn't want to yeah. be looking out. She wants to be looking in. And there's a lot of other ones here too. I, this is a really kind of a funny one. This is Gal Gadot. For, oh. for now, I put this in here because I, this was the best example I could find. But there's there's probably a dozen more like this. When a girl bites her lip, and she's looking again, whose frame is she in? Is she looking out at the camera? Is she laughing? She's trying to 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 mug for the camera. No, she's looking at this guy. I forget, I, who's the guy? Who's the actor in this? I can't. Uh, Chris Pine. And I, I, this mm -hmm. this is an interview for the first Wonder Woman movie, and it's mm -hmm. available on YouTube. If you type in Gal Gadot. Chris Pine Wonder Woman interview. You mm -hmm. can watch this and she's looking. She's married, by the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is yeah. when, you, when you talk about you can't control these things. She has been married for a while, too. You can see during the interview, she is looking at him. She's feeling these feelings of sexual attraction. And Flush. then you realize she, again, like you said earlier, she realizes the cameras are on her and she immediately stops stops it, catches herself and, and goes mm -hmm. back into professional mode. But right, right here was a quick moment of weakness. Yeah, that's a good, and this was a really good example. I, I saw this as well, but this is a really good example of like when a woman can't help herself, but be in your frame. This is where you want to get. This is the, and you want to get there naturally, right? It's not forced. You're the guy that she, you need to be the guy. I keep saying this all over and over again. I'll say it one more time. Women want guys that other guys want to be and other women want to bang. And when they are in that, when their subconscious, when their id recognizes that guy as the alpha, as the guy she really wants to get, she's she loses that consciousness. She Like what you're saying right here, she, she bites her lip. She doesn't know she's doing this. She doesn't know what yeah. she, I caught this right here because 
that's you know she's at that point perfect she, example she's she's unconsciously attracted to this guy she's uh, she's unconsciously aroused to to what chris pine she's unconscious of what her actions are and then of course when you see this she recovers because that consciousness comes back and she goes oh wait i'm on camera right and so she, she you will see this happen live in real time in other ways so like use your red pill lens to see these signs right here because when we're talking about body language when we're talking about learning it this is the learning process like you have to you have to understand that you can learn these things you can be sensitive to these things and you can use these things to your advantage if you pay attention if you're willing to invest in understanding this and learning all this and you know learning social intelligence i realize there's an investment involved but when you get to this point where you are really using your red pill lens and you can see what's going on like a lot of guys tell me this and i'm sure you probably get this too john is like guys will say i think this girl's giving me ioi's but i can't figure out if she's giving mixed messages or if it's like if she's really into me what does it mean when she bites her lip what does it mean when her eyes dilate what does it mean when her face flushes or whatever this is where we're at this is the lesson that you need to learn she's in an unconscious state of attraction and arousal and this is like gold if i could find a way to like package this if i could find a way to put this in a bottle for guys i could be a billionaire overnight but it's oh, yeah. not about that it's 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 a process it's understanding how it's like learning a martial art almost right you have to train and you really have to get at the idea idea and you have to experience it and you got to fall flat on your ass sometimes to really to oh, understand yeah. this but once you get to that point you'll read this and you'll see this sort of like innately because you'll have internalized it by then yeah i have one if you want to see if here i have one of uh of jason statham he's kind of been sure, sure. Known yeah for being... in, the, in the chat real quick or right, just put it up there yeah so here's here's a picture of him this girl is clearly taller than him right and uh mm -hmm. he's standing up straight here He's got his arm under around her waist. He's not leaning in. And then you can see here, like Rollo was mentioned earlier, with the way he holds the hand, mm -hmm. hand on top, dominant, on top. leading forward with the walk. He's the one in control. And then look at this. There you that go. That is a girl who yeah. likes you. She is she's, unconsciously attracted to him. She's and doing she's, that. Because and she's a, like a, a clear foot taller than him as well. Again, mm -hmm. here's another example. Look at that. <laughs> You know, that's a possessive hold by her, and he's looking at the camera. She's enamored with him. That's that's an example there of positive uh, male body language in regards to being a celebrity and having the ability to maintain frame. Because a lot of people think all you need to do is be attractive and famous, and you'll get girls. Sure, you'll get girls, but they're going to still realize that you're a beta male, and they're going to hate you in some level. And they will probably take you to the cleaners like we saw with Johnny Depp. And Amber Heard, that's a nice example as of recently. And guys, this is the last thing that you need to learn. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this. <laughs> Who has the frame here? Just oh, to, God. Well, to end off here, <laughs> don't be this guy, all right? That's that's the end of that one. <laughs> mm -hmm. oh, God. That was that the end hilarious. of that. That is hilarious. hilarious. That's maybe the side chick photo when you got to hide from your wife or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. I like that Statham stuff. I, I didn't actually even know that. I, you know, it's funny is like when I, um, when I was looking at these, I was compiling these. Then I go back through my own photos and I, I looked at some like vacation photos of myself with my wife. And I'm looking at her and she's like looking into me. I can, I think I've showed you some of them in the, uh, our, our DMs for, for rule zero. You know, mm -hmm. where uh, we'll be, uh, we'll be at a, I think we were at a bar or something at, in a, at, at the beach or something. She's got her hands, you know, draped over the top of my, my, my forearms while we're looking out, you know, right. yeah. uh, and she's not like, you know, we're, she's not mooning or anything like that. And some of them, she's looking up to me and, and I looked at this and I go, well, gee, I didn't even know I was doing this. I didn't, I, it, it's an education for Rolo Tomasi to see how this works. I didn't understand most of this until I started analyzing these pictures and then saying, okay, what's the commonalities here? What, what, what does my instinct say when I see that? What does my instinct say when when I see uh, 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 the uh, the I love mommy pose or the, the or the hand over kind of thing? I didn't even know I was doing that until somebody told like uh, Joe Navarro was showing me you know, the steeple or whatever. Um, <laughs> there's another one that that Joe Joe Navarro was talking about is like there's a uh, uh, when a guy puts a uh, puts his hand in his pocket and he he's kind of like this and like his hands in his pocket but the the finger and the like the pistol is kind of coming out of the out of the pocket out of your jeans pocket. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think 
called that like a false dick or something like that. It's, if, but, I, I actually yeah. have uh, I have a male body language course that's coming up with everybody who mm -hmm. gets into body language mastery. But when you are when your hands are in your uh, like let's say these four fingers are in your jean pocket, mm -hmm. and then you have your thumbs out. That's like sexual framing of the male genitals. It's like kind of like a subconscious signaling, letting mm -hmm. the women know, like, hey, like I'm here, I'm confident. And that you've seen, you saw that a lot mm -hmm. back in the day with like the James Dean photos, you know, yeah. that typical greaser look, you know, like the mm -hmm. the black leather jacket, right. hair slicked back when men were more naturally alpha. And now in, in America, kind guys, guys are like more naturally beta, unfortunately compared yeah. to like what we saw back then, even celebrities. It's like, you know, back in the day, Steve McQueen, like, come on, an icon of masculinity compared to, you know, Justin Bieber nowadays, when he's right. being holding on to his girlfriend, like mommy dearest. So again, when yeah. you, when you study body language, when you learn this stuff, um, it is beneficial to you. And I mean, the, the great litmus test for everybody, I always say, use celebrity relationships because the eye is always on them. There's always tons mm -hmm. of photos. There's always tons of interviews. So you can do on your personal time. It's a hobby of mine to analyze uh, celebrity relationships and it's great to watch. I mean, it's not great, but it's funny to watch them fall apart when you predict they're going to fall apart. It's very mm -hmm. validating because you're like, dang, I'm really, I'm really smart. Like I figured this right. out. Yeah, I, you know, I'm looking at the chat here and that's, that's another thing is if you see like, like Hollywood power, power couples and stuff, look at the dynamic between the two of them. That's the thing that really, I think throws off a lot of guys, particularly in the black pill, particularly in MGTOW, particularly in the guys who are just like uh, all about, uh, all about looks and everything else. It's like, well, yeah, of course he's a, he's a, he's a famous guy, Jason, Jason Statham, right. Or whoever, like, well, he's a good looking dude, of course, whatever. Uh, but then these are the same guys who will say, well, if a guy like Brad Pitt can't get it then who can, right? It's like, well, that contradicts, one contradicts the other. Well, is it, if, if you think that fame and good looks are, are everything, well, apparently not because you've got Brad Pitt, sexiest man alive, who still can't make it work with this girl, right? So it's, it's what is it? Is it, is it all about looks and, it, and women just moon over you and you live happily ever after? Or do you actually have to have some fucking game? Do you actually have to be, do you actually have to have like some alpha bravado? Do you have to have some congruency between who you are as a person and what you look like? And what a woman expects of you as a famous, a uh, high, well, I want to say famous, a high value man. What is the, what, what are you about that is congruent with the way that you look or what the expectation, not just of women, of what everybody, like the, like your, even your male fans, like as a, let's just say you're a, an actor, what do they expect of you? There's an instinctual understanding about like what it is that we, when we see somebody, um, you know, what, what are they saying? What's their body language saying? And that's why this shit is important. That's why I'm getting behind your, 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 uh, your, body language mastery this time so if you guys want to and i'm, I'm going to get to super chats today i know people are asking i will i, will, I usually get those to those at the very end of the show and we're, we're just about to wrap up here so but before i do i want to make sure that everybody knows that if you uh want to get into uh john's uh body language mastery for this time i think you're closing the doors on monday right or is that the last monday day at, at midnight the yeah. the enrollment period closes because it's not just a course so you guys know you get a course, but then we all enter the digital classroom. And then me, Rich, Rolo, Ryan, Troy, we all come behind the scenes and we answer your questions live. There's nobody in the entire manosphere, red pill sphere, whatever you want to call it. There's nobody doing this stuff like we are. So if you have like legitimate questions that you want to come and ask us, you can do it. Not only does it get you three weeks of coaching in quarter one, but you get grandfathered into quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four. We're all, let's be honest, everybody's worried about the big beer bug pandemic going on right now. We're all on lockdown. This is an opportunity to use this time to become a better man. And to top it off, I mean, Big Daddy Trump's sending everybody 1200 bucks. So if, you you, if, if you're worried about the course cost, it's 100% covered. So yeah. that's what we offer in regards I to this to, course. Uh, I also want to emphasize real here at the end here is like when if if i come in when i come in and i'm i'm there or rich is there or whoever else is there it's not just about like oh go do this or go you know uh do these things it's not about aping the the behaviors but it's understanding why the behaviors exist in the first place why like what's the underlying you know intelligence or the psychology 
of a handover or a steeple or or whatever those whatever that body language is it's not just hey guys you think about doing this but that's not it it's understanding the actual nature of that language the body language the sub communications as we said and then we we can also communicate more freely behind a private you know paywall because let's be honest if we really wanted to talk about what we talked about all of our youtube channels would be banned like right. they, 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 you know this and it's not like we're not, we're not behind the scenes yeah. like kill all women or take away their voting rights or anything stupid like that. But, you know, they just have their insane uh, censorship that's going on. And behind this, you know, private community, we can communicate 100 percent with clarity to help you get exactly where you want to in life. Like I said, last year I had over 530 students sign up. 500, mm. I think it was 532 to be example. To be, excuse me, to be exact, it was 532. And a lot of these guys are re-enrolling. So that should just let you know right off the bat. I mean, there's guys in the chat right now who are part of it and endorsing it. I'm not even asking them to, you know? Yeah. So that's a big thing right there. So if you guys, if this interests you, if this is something that you want to get in, in into, uh, you can... I've been putting the banner up for uh, for the link, but if you just want to click on it, it's the very first link in the description right below. You can't miss it. You don't even have to uh, expand the show more thing. You just click on that one. You you can go and can sign up for it. You get more information about it. If you have any more questions about it, you can you can hit up John privately or whatever. Um, I want to uh, I I, I want to get through. Usually, John, I go through my my supers at the Let's end do it. Of the show here. So uh, this was a really good one actually. I think I'm gonna start with this one. Uh, Joshua says, can you infer from jokingly bops or touches sometimes in passing from girls who have positive interactions, who you have positive interactions with? Anytime like, a woman reaches, like, smacks you or whatever. Anytime a woman reaches out to touch you, it's a positive thing. Mm -hmm. It's it's just a positive thing. Anytime she you, know. you make a joke and she reaches across the table and touches you, you know, and, and just because she has a boyfriend or husband, or it doesn't really matter. I mean, if she's reaching out to touch you, make some kind of physical attraction, you got to realize at the end of the day, we're just apes. And that's a positive body language gesture for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I got, I'm guys, I'm sorry if I didn't put it up on screen, but I'm going to go back here and see which ones I have done and which ones I have not. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Yolo says, hi, Rolo. What do you think about the book, how to win friends and influence people? Is it anything, uh, in his book that we should avoid? Uh, I, that's Carnegie's book, I think, right? Dale Carnegie. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's, that's who that is. Uh, an old book. So, uh, remember we have, we have more accurate information than we did then. Again, I'm a little sketchy about like things like, uh, how to win friends and the, or, uh, what is it? Rich dad, poor dad, or, um, right. What's the other one? Um, uh, a lot of these are still based on the sort secret. of like, the <laughs> secret. Old What's the one with Napoleon that's Hill? Uh, Napoleon Hill. That's what it was. Uh, it's um, uh, Think and Grow Rich. Think right? and Grow Rich. Yeah. 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 Those kinds of things. I mean, if you get something out of them, like uh, a lot of people like give me grief because I don't really take, um, what is it, the way of the superior man, all of that seriously. Um, because it's, it's really, that kind of stuff is really kind of woo woo spiritual stuff. But, uh, the, um, you know, how to influence people and win friends or whatever it is. Uh, a lot of that is really kind of a derivative from the power of positive thinking, which is Norman Vincent Peale. Uh, go look up Norman Vincent Peale on Wikipedia and read his read his history. You owe it to yourself to do that if that if this is what you want, because like guys like Tony Robbins, guys like these guys who are like The Secret, for example, um, Zig Ziglar, uh, L. Ron Hubbard. It's all about you know power positive thinking. And I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying that it's more of a grift than it's really a you know. Than something that might benefit you. I don't know. Maybe maybe it is, but I I see that I see these kinds of things as sort of a grift. But uh, let's see. Uh, I got let's see. Sp uh, spring. I already put that one up. Let's see. Uh, let's see. First, uh, a greeting from my friend Bianco, who just unplugged. Aside from what you do think about acting, as if uh, as if fake. Oh, fake it till you make it. What do you think about fake it till you make it? You think that that's a, is that like a is that part of the course? Do you think is that part of like just do these things until it becomes natural? I think there is something to be said for fake it till you make it because mm -hmm. if you're you know if you're trying to be confident, you're probably and you're coming from a place where you're not confident, you're probably always slouching over, you're probably speak low, you probably keep your head down like this, you know. Mm -hmm. So when you stand up straight, when you stand up with your shoulders back, chest up, 
uh, chest, uh, chest up, chin up, you know, flexing your stomach, standing upright, it's going to feel weird to you. It's going to feel almost as if you're faking it. So mm-hmm. I think, no, you have to act as if, and at the end of the day, like if you want to become something new than you are not right now, mm-hmm. changing is going to be something that feels unnatural. You're going to feel like this just doesn't feel natural because you're used to your old self. Kind of like you talk about, you know, regressing to your beta blue ways, just because that's more comfortable. This new person that you're trying to be, that you're trying to correct, um, this is going to feel weird at first, but you may interpret that as faking it. But no, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Fake it till you make it is. I'm not telling you go out and like, you know, run like a financial scam on people or something like that. But, you know, definitely, even if you're not rich, you know, dress like you dress like you're rich, you know, make sure you look good. Make sure you act like you have what you want, even though you may not have it. And that's a good way of like, I know it's going to sound woo woo, but when I say this, but that's a way of like attracting it to you, not mm-hmm. in like a spiritual way, but just by the that's way you a, act, it'll, it'll pull other people in. That's one of the 48 laws of power is act like a king to be treated like a king, right? There's, a, or what is it? Uh, uh, don't, uh, I forget, God damn it, I forget the, uh, the number of the, the law. There's, that was one. There's another one where it's, uh, um, uh, enter into action with boldness. That's another one. Yeah. Um, there's there's a lot of laws of power that are around, uh, you know, having an outward signaling of a change that has happened on the inside of you. Like a lot of people, they they really get self conscious about game or learning. Like like back in the old days, anyways. Like like the, the PUAs and everything going out into the clubs. These most of these guys never been in a club in their lives. They wouldn't know what to do. Oh yeah. And and so they're out there and it feels unnatural. Like you were saying before, it's not something that they that they're comfortable with. Uh, most of them are not. They're low on the social intelligence side of things. I'm not saying like they're retarded. I'm just saying that they're just low in the social intelligence, and so that's uncomfortable. It's something that they're not used to. And how do you how do you learn to ride a bicycle? How do you learn to do? How do you learn to play guitar? You practice. You do it over and over and over again until you figure something out, until it becomes something that's natural for you. And uh, that's uh, getting over that self consciousness. I think is the really hard part for guys because there's an element of rejection that goes along with it as well. But um, just it's 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 like learning anything else man it's like learning whether it's body language mastery or learning game or learning you know or just reading the rational mail and going and having it sort of absorb whatever it is that you're that you're learning from it um it's going to feel weird at first it's going to seem counterintuitive and that's if there's any sort of silver lining in that it's you need to ask yourself why does this feel counterintuitive why is this feel kind of weird to me to do this is it because i'm just not like that or is it because i've been trained to think and to interpret this as being like false. And a lot of guys will say, well, I can't, I can't keep up the act. I can't keep up the act constantly. Who can possibly be alpha all the time? I can't keep up the act. It's like, yeah, because it's an act because you haven't internalized it yet because it's not part of who you are yet. It hasn't become your second nature. So like, like people will say like, well, Rolla, you have to get, do you have to game your wife all the time? No, dumbass. I've been living with this person for 23 years. 24. I am the game when it comes to my marriage. Man. I, <laughs> I'm natural. And I, and I'm really full of myself. But the thing is, is like, that's. I'm just the, thinking of Triple it, H. <laughs> it's the truth. It's the truth. Yeah. My wife throws something and she gives me a shit test. And I'm, I'm not, I'm not above shit. Test. I, it's not like I go, hmm, let me go. Let me consult these notes over here for the yeah. rational male and see what the proper response is for doing <laughs> No, that's not what I do. It's like, you don't book it's consultation natural. calls with Rich and ask him what's yeah. what's alpha. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, what should I do, man? I don't do that because uh, I am the game. Well, at least with my wife, I am. Oh man, I am. So that's the thing is understand that when it feels unnatural to you, yeah, okay, it, it is. That's okay. And that's a and that's a good thing because it means that you're like sort of unlearning what you've learned. So uh, another one here, I think this kind of goes on. The other one was uh, Spanish conquistador says, uh, when a girl insults you casually for no reason, what does that mean? I think it's kind of similar to like the arm bump, right? When she's giving you grief, she's giving you shit back. Uh, wait, one more time. When she's when she's giving you. What, what, what does it mean when a girl insults you or casual casually for no reason? Mm, she feels like I she like can get away with it. But like, yeah, not she serious. Feels- I mean, Miss MLD doesn't do that. If she does, it's like super, mm. super, super small. But like, uh, so I, see as, I see that as an active shit test. But what do you see it as? Yeah, definitely, it's a little bit of a shit test. And also, like girls who think they can just get away with like making little, little slight remarks at you. That's, in my opinion, that to an extent is uh, beta, 
beta to what is it beta tization by a thousand concessions mm -hmm. it starts there man if you guys don't think like you know these girls were like you see on youtube like hitting their boyfriends like with fuck with full-on force punches uh -huh. it starts with these little insults and he doesn't say anything and then she'll maybe like smack him when she's angry and then she'll push him and then it'll escalate to the point that she's punching him that's how they they start testing you is those little things at the beginning that's why you got to snuff them out and you got to let them know hey listen if you're gonna want to if you're gonna be with me if you want to be in a relationship with me this is not going to be good enough. Like you're not going to be able to like make these little insulting comments at me. And if it's, it's, if it's something that bothers you, you know what I mean? If she says these little things and you're like, you're like, Oh man, she shouldn't have said that. And you catch yourself having that conversation with yourself, then you mm -hmm. need to correct her. That's a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see what else I got here. Um, when you watch a bro get married to his bossy as fuck misses, uh, like a lion walking into an open cage with a trip door hits you right in the feels. There you go. Okay. So I read it. There you go. <laughs> I'm like, I want to get some questions here. As uh, Let's say Edward says, Joe, Joe Navarro is the, the effing man. Yeah, he is. Uh, Super Nifty Susie says, hi, Rolo. I'm feminine in shape, but always get dumped by men. I'm 29 years old and can't seem to figure things out. Any advice? Yes. Stop coming on my, my uh, super chats here because I know what you're trying to do. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, is this, is this I, ongoing, I, girl? At, at a certain time, at a certain point in the show is when I guess that the word gets out that Rolo Tomasi and the Rational Male is doing a show and I get all of the, uh, I get all of the, uh, the, the super tot super chats. So, um, mm -hmm. let's see what, what else do I got here? Deep down. She feels like, oh, Tim, um, uh, okay. So we talked about that. This is a lot. Okay. So this will be the last one and then we'll wrap up. Uh, the same same dude says, uh, what is the proper response if your woman is subconsciously leaning into another man's frame, like Gal Gadot, for example, uh, especially when she's in your presence? Hey, Marty. Well, no. <laughs> well, there's two things. A, look, it's inevitable. If you think you're going to date a woman and she's just never going to feel attraction for another man for the rest of her life, mm -hmm. I mean, that is that's a fool's game to believe that. However, if you constantly see your woman doing this, if it's happening more than once a month, even once a month is too much. That mm -hmm. is when you need to take a look at the mirror and realize like you might be her consolation prize. You might be her participation mm -hmm. trophy. If she's constantly looking at other guys and stuff, because women know when they're being, you know, inappropriate. Where am I? Thinking? Inappropriate. You know what I mean? They know when they're being inappropriate and they know when they're not. And they also know if their man is going to let them get away with it and if their man is not going to let them get away with it. So if you're seeing her constantly giving these choosing signals, these indicators of interest towards other men in your presence, that's, in my opinion, is a huge red flag. Like, if you catch her on social media, that's another thing. I'd be like, okay, well, she knew I wasn't around. But if she's doing it in front of you... That's... You, got deeper, you got bigger problems. Yeah. yeah. You got bigger problems than body language at that point. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, and I, I, and just to, just to put my two cents in here is, and I, I've said this a million times that women will, uh, will make rules for betas and they will break rules for alphas. Is she making rules for you? And is she breaking rules for the guy that she's leaning into? That is sort of, I, I won't, I won't call it a litmus test, but it's really a litmus test whenever, what, no matter what, whether you're in a marriage or you're with a girlfriend or you're just dating a girl or she's in your rotation, whatever it is, always understand, always ask yourself this question. Is she making me rules? Is she breaking rules to get yeah. with me? Is she breaking rules to facilitate us to have sex, to, to, to meet up, to do whatever she, is she, uh, is she making herself late to school? Like, is she making herself late to work because she really wants to, to, you know, prolong the magic kind of thing. Is she breaking rules? Is she defying her parents? Is she, you know, changing her religion and moving across the country to get with you. Is she breaking rules to be with you? Or is she making more rules saying like, I'm not going to have sex with you until I get a ring. Yeah. Uh, that's making yeah. rules for you that you're you know, probably, you're probably the beta. I'll say, I'm not trying to say this to show off, but I'll just give it as an example. Okay. If I had girls who straight up told me like, if I have to choose between my family and continuing a relationship with you, I'll choose a relationship with you. I've had girls who have been like, I'll give up my religion just to stay with you. Like, listen, if a girl really likes you and she's really into you, she will forsake her family. She'll forsake her religion. She'll quit her job. They will move mountains. That's why today in 2020, she got your text, bro. She knew you text her and said, meet her at 7 p.m. and she didn't show up. She knew all of these things. 
okay? She just wasn't interested in you. Or she just didn't value mm -hmm. you as a high enough man. Like, that's just, that's just period. She didn't see you as a high value man. There's no ands if or buts about it. That's why the girls who do like you, they hit you up out of nowhere. You're like, what about this photo on your Instagram with this comment on March 17th, 2008? Who is this girl? Why is she in your photo on this photo here? Like they will give you a, a like a, a, a private investigator breakdown on your social media. Yeah. So yeah. no, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if a girl is into you, it's it's gonna be there's there's nothing that's gonna be able to stop her. Nothing. Do you think? Do you think Vince Castle's wife, his hot little twenty five year or twenty four year old, twenty five year old, uh, you know, black girl wife, makes rules for him? <laughs> no. do, you think, do you think that that's a, no, no, just watching the pictures and seeing everything just from your perception just what's your instinct telling you does she make rules for him Dude, i don't think so I, does not. she break rules for him well clearly she is right she's breaking rules for that guy uh last one omar says is there anything wrong with playfully teasing her no not. that's a good game <laughs> that's yeah. actually a pretty good game as long as you're doing it within you know with congruency and you're not like pawing her and you're not like a, uh you know you it depends on what, like, does she see you as a beta? Does she see you as an alpha? If you're playfully teasing her and she sees you as predominantly a beta, she's going to call HR. But if she's, if she's giving you signs of interest and you're kind of playfully teasing with her, women, again, play with her and play with her. That's what that that's a good uh, I think that's a good en ending right there. Yeah. All right, man. This has been really this has been really fun. This has been a really good show. Yes. Uh, so once again, if you guys are interested in body language mastery part two uh, or the the second round, uh, again, I'm I'm endorsing it this time. Uh, it it or er, he earned my respect. I think it's I think it's something that I can put myself behind. So um, if you want to get involved, the link is right there. It's the very first link in the uh, the description right there. Um, join up. I'm going to help out. Uh, Rich is going to help out. It's just something that we're doing. Uh, you know, while we're waiting to find out what's going on with this, this whole uh, COVID thing, uh, we're still going to be doing the rule zero in Las Vegas. We just moved it to October. So in the meantime, learn about body language man there you go <laughs> uh anything else you want to say uh give us any uh, parting just thoughts? the enrollment period ends on monday march 30th at midnight okay so if you want to get in you have to get in now because like i said it's not just a video course after this we shift to a digital classroom and i cover mm -hmm. all your questions whether it be the big three for men we cover it money muscles and game you want to make more money you want to make more muscles you want to learn game with a red pill lens like you could go out there and get a coach but he's probably gonna be blue pill i had a business coach but he was blue pill and quite honestly i just couldn't i just couldn't respect the guy i couldn't deal with him because he was you know at the end of the day red pill is dealing with ultimate truth and i want to be operating in as much ultimate truth as possible so when i see you know these guys trying to get like you know well, I could go to Body Language Mastery or I could just go to my therapist, my marriage counselor and talk with her. And I'm like, oh, great. So you're going to go pay to get two on one <laughs> and be told no. that you're not a good you're guy. A guy. You're the mm -hmm. bad guy. Like, you know, I, I just said, if you want to get coaching with a red pill lens to it, like I said, three weeks starting April 1st, two hours in the morning, two hours a night. That's four hours every single day for three weeks. Plus, they're all recorded. So you can go back and watch them. And also, I have 90 hours of last year's webinar footage that will also be granted to you on April 1st. So that's all I got to say. It's, a, it's cool. a good value. And like I said, you get literal live interaction with me, Rolo, Rich, Ryan, Troy, Donovan, the whole nine yards, all the squad. Cool, cool. Thanks, man. It's been a good one. Uh, guys, uh, just to let you know, uh, Wednesday we'll have the uh, – we'll do the show again uh at will be at 1 30 p.m or excuse me 1 30 pacific uh 4 30 eastern uh i i'm working on another guest right now uh also look for another one-off kind of like what i did uh last wednesday uh I, i'm i've got a uh, i've got a new topic that i'm walking it's just going to be the common shaming tactics of of women the four most common shaming tactics of women. so um so watch for that. That'll be sometime during this week. Um, and again, it's the breakdown. It's it's understanding the the nuts and bolts of it and the psychology behind it and why why 
you know, things to, to look out for. So anyways, uh, I will see you guys all on Wednesday. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thanks, John. It's been good. Thank you.